What's up, folks? How we doing? This is the first live stream in a good long while. And it is hot in here. Oh, I just realized it's very hot in this kitchen. And uh, <laughs> that's just striking me now. I hear that we have, um, we have uh, some super chats here with that I d I'm just realizing I can't see. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, here we go. All right, I got it. Uh, Jortendo just gave a $20 super chat. Thank you so much. Tomorrow will be officially be one week since getting my wisdom teeth removed, and I can eat all of my favorite foods again. Congratulations, Jortendo. That's an exciting time in a young man's life. Um, I got my, my wisdom teeth out when I was uh, about your age. I don't know what your age is, but I assume it's around there. And uh, at the time, my girlfriend at the time um, was annoyed with me that uh, I was wincing during, um, during uh, what was it called? It, um, what was that goofball comedy? It's a mad, 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 mad world. And uh, it was a weird time in my life. So I hope that yours is going better, dude. Thank you very much for the super chat and uh, feel better. I look forward to eating uh, solid foods again. I want to introduce the folks behind the scenes right now. It's been so long that we've live streamed that um, since we've live streamed that uh, last time he was here, it was a secret. So we couldn't talk about it. And um, now, you know, the cat's out of the bag. So I can say... Uh, very happy to, to announce to anybody who doesn't, hasn't already figured it out yet that uh, Vincent Cross is in the other room uh, from who joined us recently, uh, joined us this year as the uh, director, editor of, of uh, Being With Babish. And uh, he's in the other room. Vince, do you want to say hi in the mic real quick? Oh, I'm sorry. You can't hear me. <laughs> sorry. I've, I forgot who can't hear what. Anyway, he's walking over the mic right now. So Vincent, why do you uh, let me say hi to the to the people? Oh my. Okay, all right. Now he's ready to come to the mic. This is a professional production, I promise. Uh, head on over to the mic, Vinny, and say hi to the people. This is gonna be the first time I think that your voice has been heard in a public forum. Am I wrong? Hey, what's going on, everybody? And hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> Welcome back to you, Vincent Cross. And the other fellow that we have in the room there, uh, you will know if you've ever been to one of my live streams before, he is my faithful companion, my prairie home companion, and uh, my, uh, my, my uh, common law husband, uh, Sawyer Jacobs. Sawyer, Hello, you say everyone. Hi? Very happy to be here and uh, very happy by that title. I'm going to put that on my LinkedIn now. I actually, I just stole that from myself. I, I, I called you that in my book acknowledgments. <laughs> oh, spoiler, I didn't know that. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, uh, and for those of you who, who don't know, uh, the new Binging with Babish official companion cookbook drops in October. You can pre-order it now on Amazon. I'll do a bigger announcement later on, on socials and on the show. But for now, it's just, uh, it's hanging out there. Uh, fellas, you want to come in here real quick and join me in a drink? I'm going to have myself a uh, whiskey here if you guys want to come on in. I'm drinking Angel's Envy tonight, if you couldn't tell from looking at the screen in the past 10 minutes. And uh, the boys are going to head in and uh, join me for a drink unless they're trying to tell me they can't. You got <laughs> he, he hears you 20 seconds later. So I oh, okay. All right. All right. My bad. Here, I got two glasses for y'all. Come say hi to the people. We got Sawyer and Vinny in the house. Sorry, smaller glasses. I'm not trying to make a power play or That's anything. Fine. It's just all I have. I apologize. Are there any cubes left? Uh, yeah, yeah, they're in the bottom freezer. If you want to grab those, don't use the oh no, the, yeah, don't use the pencil cubes. Uh, I just had a water tank replaced in my apartment, and all the water smells like pencils, which is uh, unfortunate. So we're drinking Angel's Envy tonight. Not sponsored, just a fan. Angel's Envy, hit me up. You know where to find me. I'll be right here. There we go. Thank you for joining me tonight, gentlemen. Cheers. Thank you guys for tuning in to the first live stream. <laughs> a little behind, yeah. Oh, we got a bunch of super chats here. I'm just going to touch on these super chats, folks. Let's see. Yo Babish, uh, uh, the king of cucumbers gave $10 and said, Yo Babish, can we get some noise for the uh, in the chat for my man Tiny Whisk? That I can do. Here he is, folks, in all his tiny glory. Tiny Whisk in, is in the house, as always. And uh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set him aside. He's gonna he's gonna be around. He'll help me mix up the uh, the yogurt marinade. That's that's gonna be Tiny Whisk's job today. Yeah, I, I haven't told many people this, but like I'm still I still don't I I, I had never I had any idea that calling, you know, using this whisk and being like you know use your Tiny Whisk would start a a, a revolution, uh, in in the online community. Um, 
And uh, we're, we're working on, right now, we're working on finally getting some BWV merch in your hands. And one of them, hopefully, is going to be a BWV branded Tiny, tiny Whisk. We're just wondering how we're going to get a, a logo on there. We'll figure it out. If, if, they, if they can grow an ear on a mouse, they can, they can put a... <laughs> I, was, I, mean, I stole that from 30 Rock. I'm, I'm such a loser. Okay. Thank you so much, King of Cucumbers. Son of a Pizza Man is here. Happy Thursday. Can we get another shout out for my channel? Son of a Pizza Man, I will always shout you out for uh, your very generous super chats. Thanks for coming and hanging out. Go check out Son of a Pizza Man. Son of we a got, Pizza Man is here. Son of a Pizza Man is here. Uh, uh, Anna Harper just gave $10. Hello from the Minnesota Blizzard. There's a blizzard in Minnesota right now. And is, does MN stand for Minnesota? Did I just get that hilariously wrong? I think it stands for Minnesota. Well, I certainly hope so, because now I've said it in public. Anyway, I didn't know that there was a blizzard there. Please stay safe and warm. Uh, we got 20 pounds 50 from <laughs> Christian Hill. All I can afford until the end of the month, but seriously, inspire me to cook more. Love being with Babish. Dude, thank you so much. I, 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 I feel terrible that you're giving me money when, when, when it sounds like times are tight, and I, I really appreciate it, man. Thank you so much for the support, uh, and, um, and I, I just thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate it, and thank you for shouting out being... If you guys haven't seen it yet, it's the new show, uh, Being With Babish. It's um, a uh, travel experiential cooking vlog style show where we meet up with a lucky fan every episode and give them a, a once in a lifetime kind of culinary or Vespa scooter shop experience. Uh, $10 from Galactic Senator Bruns. Uh, I love what you do. You, uh, you have made my cooking so much better than oh, that it, what it was it, uh, than what it was, I think is what, this, uh, it also gives me great enjoyment watching your videos. Thank you so much, Galactic, Galactic Senator Bruns. I really appreciate it. That's very, very kind. Very kind words. King of Cucumbers just gave another five bucks. Dude, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You're very, very kind. Thank you guys for the super chats. Thank you for coming and hanging out. I'm just going to reload this page because I'm, I'm using my iPad instead of my laptop for once, and it's not updating the numbers. No, I don't want to rate the YouTube app right now. I'm not in the mood. Okay. Cool. Oh, we got a whole bunch of new Super Chats. See, this, this app, I'll, I'll rate this app. I'll, I'll give this app a rating. Congrats on four, uh, 4 mil, Andrew, from Cooking with CJ. Thank you so much, Cooking with CJ. We got Son of a Pizza Man and Cooking with CJ in the house. Thank you guys for hanging out. Uh, thank you for uh, the Super Chats. Really appreciate it. Sh uh, Shelly Welly, hi from your fans at Hofstra. Will you ever come visit? What's up, Hofstra? Hofstra, for those of you who don't know, is the school that I attended for college, and yes, I absolutely will come visit. It's been a long time, it's been too long. It's probably been, ooh, it's probably been seven years since I've been out to that campus and had, a, had myself a, 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 ta a taco salad bowl. Um, thank you so much, Shelly Welly, thanks for hanging out. And hello to all, you, all my people at Hofstra that are watching. Uh, Karina Quintero, five bucks, thank you so much. Hey Babs, I'm enlisted in the Navy and you really helped me unwind with your videos. Much love, we got Navy. dude. Thank you so much, Karina. Really appreciate it. That is so kind. Um, and, and thank you for your service. Really, obviously, very much appreciate anybody who is uh, protecting our country. And thank you for your service and your sacrifice. And thank you for, for the super chat. It's very, very kind. I'm sorry if I'm missing anybody here. I'm trying to pencil cubes from the aeronautics guy. Yeah. Yeah, all my water smells like pencils right now. And uh, they said four weeks and it'll go away. They said it's safe, but God, I don't trust them. Um, just got 50, I don't know what that currency is, from Ida Carlson. No message, but thank you so much, Ida. Uh, we got five bucks from Stephen Inman. Uh, love, your, love your vids. You're an inspiration to me and making me want to cook more. Thank you so much, Stephen. That's really, really sweet of you to say. That's a very, very kind thing. And it's one of the things that really makes me want to keep making more and more content. I, I love hearing that. And um, keep cooking, man. Thank you. Uh, Arik Vyach uh, gave $5. I've been watching your show since the Fraser theme song. You really have grown from my, my love for cooking. I just want to thank you. Thank you, Arik. Uh, that's very kind of you to say. And uh, I'm, I'm thank you for sticking with me for so long. Since the Fraser days, that's, that's some time. Nicholas Koskinen gave 10 euros. No message, but thank you so much, Nicholas. Uh, Sony A gave 100 Mexican, is that pesos? What's the currency in Mexico? I think it's pesos, right? I don't remember. Uh, but 100 of those, thank you so much. I love your show. Thanks for all the amazing recipes. Thank you, Sony A. Your picture looks familiar. I don't know where I know you from, but I know you from somewhere. Lied Vo Voix. Lied Voix. 
Uh, $5, love you, your cooking videos, tats, and style in general. You're lovely and warm person. Thank you, Lied Voix. Appreciate it. Some of these names that I can't pronounce, I'm very scared, are like people tricking me into saying something bad. And I just <laughs> hope that that's not the case. And now that I've said that, I'm sure somebody's going to try to do that. I'm just going to have to be extra, extra on point here. Neil Butler gave five pounds, pounds sterling. Thank you so much. Enjoy being with Babish. Keep up the great work. Thanks so much, man. I'm really glad you enjoy it. It's all thanks to contributions like yours. Being with Babish is, you know, it's, it's, it's a labor of love because it takes a tremendous amount of time and effort and money to make because we have to travel, we have to edit a much larger story, and we have to come up with story arcs, and we have to write, and we have to give large uh, gifts to, to viewers, and it, it, it takes a, it's a huge undertaking, and um, every kind word that you guys have to say about it means so much, I can't even explain it to you. Um, but sorry, I'm not going to get stuck on that because i got to read some more Super Chats. Um, Jordan Rodriguez gave five bucks and said, I love you so much I made the eggs in a nest. I swear you're my favorite person to watch on YouTube. Thank you, Jordan. That's really, really kind of you to say. Thank you. Uh, Ten bucks from, from that duck. Um, uh, greetings from a small village in Uganda. You are an inspiration to us all. A dear friend of mine just visited Uganda. Um, thank you for hanging out and thank you for the message. Uh, and... Um, that's a very, very kind thing to say. Thank you for joining us tonight, and thank you for the super chat. Aaron Kaiser gave $10. Awesome show. Can I request some fermentation videos? You know, if I were Brad Leone, I would, I would be taller and more handsome and, and uh, better at fermentation, but I'm not. Uh, but I've been talking with Brad, and we're hoping that we can do some, some crossover stuff in the very near future. I don't have anything confirmed yet, but um, I have some ideas. I have some ideas for binging. Uh, there, there's a very popular uh, request uh, for something that's fermented. I won't say what yet, but uh, keep an eye out for it in the very near future. Thank you, Aaron. Um, I can't... Uh, th we got another Aaron here. I can't pronounce the first name here. Um, Yuparin. Yuparin Aaron. Uh, Ten Canadian dollars. Uh, the fam and I love testing your recipes. M uh, let's see. Middleist is going to culinary school this September, partially inspired by you. Keep up the great work. That is lovely to hear. Um, you, you're... you're, you're um, Middleist is, uh, I assume that means like middle sibling. I, I only have one brother, so I, I don't know these terms. Um, I assume, d d it sounds like they, they've got their work cut out for them. Culinary school is no joke. I've not been there. <laughs> um, but I wish them all the best of luck because that is a, uh, that's a passion to, to chase. And uh, I hope that they, they keep going at it and I hope they keep it up. Thank you guys so much for all the super chats. Oh, jeez, there's so many more. Wow. Oh, my God. Dude, do I try to read all these? Somebody gave a $50 super chat. I obviously have to shout out to them. Mike Welker, that is an incredibly generous amount of money. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I, I can't, even, can't even come up with the words to say thank you for that amount of uh, generosity. And the, the, but everybody who's giving super chats, big or small, thank you so much. Mike, you didn't leave a message, but thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you for hanging out. Really appreciate it, man. Uh, Chad Aney uh, gave $5 and said, thanks so much for reigniting my passion for cooking, still hoping for a soul food basics. First, got to learn how to make better soul food because I'm not terribly good at it yet. I can make fried chicken and, and you know, I can, um, but uh, I, I, I'm still working on that. There's a place that does soul food uh, right up in, in near my old apartment in Harlem called Boulevard, BLVD. And I'm, you guys probably are familiar with uh, Red Rooster. That's I used to live right across the street from Red Rooster. And that place is great. But the real unsung hero of that particular part of Harlem is Boulevard. It's like brand new. And they, they, when they make their fried chicken, they do it in a cast iron pan that is filled up to the brim with oil. And it's just like bubbling and, and it's just like spattering out. And somehow it doesn't overflow and start a grease fire. It's like the thing that really, really people who have been doing it for 100 years do it that way. <laughs> so it's just like super legit. Uh, thank you, Chad, for hanging out. I'm sorry, I'm getting stuck here. 10 bucks from Full Paranoia. I've been watching you since your first episode and recently got my girlfriend watching. We must have binged every show of yours in a night. Thanks for the great videos. Thank you for watching. Thank you for the super chat and thank you for the very kind co uh, comment, Full Paranoia. Uh, I'm so scared. I'm, I'm missing so many right now. Um, they're, they're disappearing faster than I can read them. Um, $20 from Pretty Random 88. Love your show. My kids love my spaghetti now because of your red sauce recipe and make it in advance and freeze it. That's brilliant. Red sauce freezes beautifully. I'm very happy somebody took that lesson away from any of my red sauce videos. It's one of the things that I first learned how to do in college. Uh, it was one of the first things that I really like tried to learn how to cook properly. And you know, in college, obviously, you're trying to stretch every penny. So 
having a dish like red sauce where you can just cook up some pasta and throw some fresh or some, some beautiful homemade sauce on there anytime is obviously invaluable. So freezing it is, is one of the best things you can do. Guys, I'm so sorry. I'm going to read a couple more of these, but I feel like we got to get cooking. Uh, I, I, and I'm just missing so many left and right. To everybody, here, I'll, I'll get down and address, address you guys directly in a second. Uh, Cole Boren uh, gave $20. So happy to spend my birthday watching you. You're amazing. I love your videos. Thank you so much, Cole. That's really, really very kind. Thank you. And um, uh, uh, happy birthday. I just realized that that's just connected in my brain. Sorry. Happy birthday. Thank you so much for the super chat. I wish I could give you a super chat because it is your birthday. I wonder if it, can we do that? Can, can you use my account right now to, to super chat them? I'm looking into it. All right. Thank you. God, you guys are good. Uh, Angry Android gave $15. Love your show. Now that crazy ex-girlfriend is done, you're going to do a Demon Farm episode. I, I'm not sure what that is. And I haven't watched Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, so I, I need to give, get into that and take a look at that. But thank you for bringing it to my attention. I hear whispering in there. Am I missing something right now? <laughs> no, we're just uh, watching your drink water down. That's all. Oh, no. Oh, God. Okay. All right. All right. Are people commenting on that? They're like, oh, his drink's water down. Oh, they're right. It's turned into apple juice. Shoot. Um, well, no, it's still good. At least this isn't pencil water. That's really all that matters to me. Um, but uh, thank you guys so much for hanging out. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get down here real quick and just address everybody. Let's shift focus a little bit. There we are. Hi. Thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out. There are so many super chats that I just, I, 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 I wasn't able to keep up with. I saw a lot of them drop down before I could read them. And I see more coming in that I, 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 want, I do want to get cooking. So what I think we should do is uh, if you want to give a super chat, hold off for the moment. I mean, you know, give it if you want, but I'm not going to be able to respond for a little bit because I'm thinking that I should get started on the chicken uh, tikka masala. And um, uh, just huge thank you to everybody. I've never met a more supportive community in the online world <laughs> than my audience. And it's just, it, it just blows my mind every time. It's, you guys are the, some of the kindest, uh, most intuitive, and, and um, most knowledgeable and sharing and caring and giving people. And I, I can't thank you enough. And um, everybody who's giving Super Chats right now, thank you so much. And uh, I'm very sorry if I missed your question. Uh, Sawyer is going to, while I get started here, Sawyer, if you could go through some of the... Um, Sorry, Ann Vinny, if you go through some of the Super Chats and if there are any big or pressing questions that I've missed, please bring them to my attention and I will answer them as I get started here. So why don't we get cooking? I hope you guys are cooking along at home. Uh, I know this is kind of a last minute live stream. We haven't been able to do one of these in a while because we've been working on a new show called Being with Babish, uh, which is a travel vlog um, experiential kind of show. I keep using that word because it sounds good. I'm not entirely sure if it's accurate. Uh, but I'll find out. I'll, I'll check out my thesaurus after this. Um, thank you guys so much again, and let's make some chicken tikka masala, shall we? The national official dish of Great Britain, if I'm not mistaken. Because uh, I, if so, somebody in the comments pointed out to me that it is actually a a British invention, in that it is a British interpretation of classic Indian dishes, but the this particular preparation is of British descent. I'm not sure if that's true. I shouldn't just be spouting out facts because one person in the, um, in the, uh, in the comments said it, but uh, hey, that's, you know, this is the internet. This, this is what you guys signed up for, is, is, is just half-informed statements and, and nonsense. Um, let's see. I, somebody's asking me to say something out loud, and I'm so scared now that it's going to be, whoa, $100 from... Somebody, wow. Okay, I, I, <laughs> so, 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 somebody just gave a hundred bucks, and I really appreciate it. But I feel like your 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 name is something that I can't say because <laughs> uh, I'm not going to say it. But Howie, uh, thank you so much. Um, that that's that, that's an incredibly generous. Uh, 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 Thank you so much uh, for, for the super chat. I'm not sure what that is. Tanner would love a let, let me kill, kill Mr. I'm, I'm, not, I, I'm not sure what that is, but I'm going to check. I'm going to look into that. Thank you so much for your extremely generous uh, super chat. I appreciate it. I'm sorry that I couldn't say your name proper, but it's clearly a, um, a play on words, shall we say. Uh, okay. Let's get started here, folks. First thing we got to do. Am I, is there anything I should uh, touch on before I get started, Jake? No, I think we're ready to go. 
All right. Well, first thing we're going to do here, did I say any names that were made up that were designed to make me say something horrible that I didn't notice? No, we, we filtered out everything so far, but yeah, uh, they're, they're, stuff. they're trying their best. Yeah, I, sh I shouldn't have said Howie's anything. Howie's a good one. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, Howie, th yeah, because it's, uh, it's just off color enough that I'm not going to say. Um, so first thing we got to do, guys, we're making uh, uh, curry powder, or to be more accurate, we're making garam masala uh, from scratch. Garam masala. I'm not entirely sure the correct way to say that. But it starts with one uh, stick of cinnamon, which, as you, if you saw in the video, it's actually a bit difficult to break. So I'm just going to, there we go. Just give that a little crunch. There we go. Howie, thank you so much. Your, his name is going to be up there for some time. Epic Mike gave $20. Thank you for helping me get back into cooking. Keep cooking, men. Thank you for sharing that with me. That kind of stuff is what keeps me going, seriously. Thank you so much. I got another one here. Uh, Nicholas Koskinen. Uh, totally didn't put a message on the first one. Another 20 euros? Just tell me you didn't put a message on there? Thank you, but thank you. Um, totally didn't put a message on the first one. Please do get to cooking. That's what we're here for. Okay, all right, all right, okay. Wow, okay, thank you. Jeez, that's some s real generosity just to tell me to get cooking. But I'm, I'm on it, thank you. <laughs> um, okay, I don't have the recipe in front of me right now, so I think I'm just gonna eyeball this. I, I kind of remember the proportions. If I, got the, if I got the proportions wrong, I apologize, but you know, really what you're gonna end up with either way is an extremely flavorful um, spice powder. And there might be different balances of flavors. If I put in, you know, one clove of, well, I'm sorry, one tablespoon of cloves right now instead of two. I think it was two though, so I am actually gonna do like one and a half. I got it right here in front of me if you want me to tell you, or you could just oh, go and yeah. I could. That'd be awesome, thank you. Uh, so how many tablespoons of cloves? Cloves, one tablespoon of whole cloves. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. <laughs> Uh, cool. All right. Well, I, I only put one and a half in there, so that's fine. All right. One tablespoon of cloves. How much cardamom? Cardamom. One tablespoon. One tablespoon of cardamom. There we go. Cardamom has the most beautiful kind of floral scent. It reminds you of like, I don't know, it almost reminds you of potpourri in, in a very nice way, but also... There's, there's something lemony about it. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful spice. I wish I, I, I were more articulate in describing these things. Cumin seed. Okay, <clears throat> cumin seed is two t tablespoons. Two, that, see, that makes a lot of sense. There's a ton of cumin in most Indian spice blends, and this is no exception. So two tablespoons of cumin seed. What's next? Um, red pepper flakes, nutmeg, cinnamon. <laughs> okay. You got the cinnamon in got there. Got the cinnamon. I'm just going to toss some red pepper flake in there, just a little bit, just to taste. And then uh, one whole nutmeg. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's one of those inaccuracies i got to fix on the website because you're not throwing a whole nutmeg in there. We're just going to grate some in there. I believe there's coriander too, but I lost my coriander seed, so I just have ground coriander. So I'm just going to add that at the end. <coughs> Obviously, you want to get everything toasted as much as possible. I also have two whole bay leaves here I'm going to toss in. And now, Jake, if you're ready, I'm going to move on over to the stovetop, shall we? Here we go. And we're over at the stovetop, where we're going to lightly toast these spices. I don't want to see any smoke. If I see any smoke, then guess what? I'm going to start over. So I'm going to start this over nice, medium-low heat, just like that, and try to keep these moving. Like we're, I'm literally just going to let this go. You guys might see what looks like smoke. It might let off a little bit of steam, I think. I think that's what that is. Um, but if it really starts to smoke, if you see visible smoke from up here, then you know, you've, you've, you've essentially not burnt, but you've just over toasted your spices and you might have some acrid flavors. You might have some off flavors in there. So I'm just gonna try to keep this moving. It's already smelling so good. Garam masala is such a beautiful blend of spices that like you really, don't know its potential until you've ground it yourself. Because you can buy curry powder, you can buy garam masala left and right. Um, I know I'm saying that wrong. Gar garam masala or garam masala or garam masala, I'm not sure. But um, you, you, can, uh, you can buy that at any given grocery store. But ground spices just do not have the same potency or depth of flavor 
as freshly ground spices, freshly toasted ground spices. This already smells insane. It already smells so good. And I'm just gonna check the focus on here, focus a little off, there we go. That's the money. All right, this is already smelling so good. And I'm just trying to gently heat it. I don't recommend doing this at home, but I'm gonna test its warmth just by, it's, it's just barely getting the heat right now, so. I do see the cumin seed starting to turn a, kind of a toasty brown, so that means that it is. It's doing its job. All right, that's smelling mighty good. I'm gonna kill the heat. Last thing I wanna do is burn these spices live on camera. That would be very, very embarrassing. So, and I'm gonna let the, resi the, the residual heat from the pan just kinda keep working on this, keep bringing out flavors. As far as I understand, this helps co coax out some of the oils from the spices and you know, just uh, toasting anything, you're, you're amping up its flavor. It's the essence of cooking. I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna start getting too philosophical here, so let's chill out, but, um, okay, that, oh, it smells gorgeous. So now we're gonna move back over to camera A. I'm gonna grab my spice grinder. We're back over at the prep table. And this is my spice grinder. Make sure that you use a spice grinder solely for spices. This is a coffee grinder that is never, ever, ever going to be used for coffee, ever, I promise, because it would ruin both my spices and my coffee. And I'm having a hard time getting it to the plug here. Hang on. There we go. Ooh, 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 ooh. That's gonna, that's precarious. I'm gonna either pull my iPad down or, okay, there we go. All right, all right, all right. So we have power, yeah. Maybe this won't be as loud as I thought. Maybe you don't have to cut my mic. We'll find out. All right, we have our nice freshly toasted spices here. I'm just gonna put them in a smaller bowl so they're a little easier to transport. Not bowl, but measuring cup. A little easier to transport into the spice grinder. Being careful not to melt my measuring cup. And then I'm just gonna Dump these guys in here. There we go. And now this is gonna take a minute because we have some serious spices in here. Uh, uh, whole clove, cinnamon stick. These are very hearty, very uh, 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 rigid spices that are gonna take a little while to, uh, to really process down. And we don't want chunks of spices. Nothing would be worse than eating your, uh, your, your tikka masala and catching half a clove in your teeth. That'd be the end of your day, probably. You probably have to go home. So I'm gonna grind this for, it's probably gonna take like 30 to 45 seconds, and then I'm going to sift it. But uh, let's start there. So we're gonna, we're gonna experience uh, a few minutes of silence here. Jake, if my mic starts peaking, just go ahead and turn it down, I guess. Here we go, in three, two, one. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear me right now, but um, yeah, like I was saying, for those of you just joining us, uh, it's very, very, very important to absolutely powderize these spices. Don't want any whole chunks of spices hanging out. And in that spirit, I'm gonna stop here and I'm gonna take a look. Don't breathe, don't breathe this. Um, yeah, all right, I still see some, uh, some whole chunks in there. <coughs> don't breathe this. Um, and I'm also just gonna, you know, scrape down the sides a little bit because you, you, you start getting spices packed up against the walls of the grinder and they're not getting the same attention that everybody else is getting and that's just not fair, okay? This is a, this is, this is a, a fair and equal system that we're trying to create here for these spices. And I would, normally I would wipe out my spice grinder too because, you know, I'll also grind in natto seeds and, and, and see, just flavors that don't make sense in here. Actually, natto seeds would probably be pretty good. Anyway, uh, worlds are colliding. Um, so normally I'd wipe it out, but the last thing I ground in here, I remember, was was this garam masala, uh, garam masala, garam masala, garam masala. Anywho, here we go. <laughs>
Okay, I'm thinking that's probably probably good enough. We're also gonna sift it anyway, so that's going to uh, help um, <coughs> weed out any uh, big pieces. So here we go. <coughs> oh, it got me. Sorry, that probably that probably peaked a bunch. So did that. Oh, I apologize to everybody's ears. Okay, so now I'm gonna unplug this before it yanks my iPad off the counter. There we go. Ooh, okay. And let's go ahead. And I keep panicking, and this is something that uh, I've been doing since the first live stream. I keep panicking because I look at my um, my monitor here, and it's not recording. And I'm so used to having a red bar around the outside when I'm doing anything important. Right now, there's nothing, so it's just freaking me out constantly. Okay. See, I see a whole chunk of bay leaf in there. That's why you really got to sift this because you you guys saw how thoroughly I just ground that, and it's. Still didn't get everything. Let's get it all out of there. There we go. Right, Jake, am I missing any uh, important questions or anything good? Um, nothing yet. A lot of uh, impressions of the the blender, but besides that, uh, you haven't missed anything. Yeah, a lot of re we we almost harmonized there, Jake. That was cool. Oh, this is a great use for tiny whisk right here. Check this out. I can coax the spices through the uh, through the, uh, uh, the the sieve here with tiny whisk. That is brilliant. Bet y'all didn't see that coming. And see, I, I'm seeing bigger and bigger chunks surface here. And he th has a whole chunk of cinnamon. And I see half a clove. These are not things that you want in your get dinner guests' teeth when they're trying to enjoy your meal. Okay. So. Even though I, I just ground the hell out of that, I still have some whole spices in here, which you'll see in a second. Yeah, look at that. Here, I'll give you a close up. Look at those whole spices that you'd be picking out of your teeth right now if it weren't for Daddy Babby. Tell ya. <laughs> um, sorry, shouldn't use that terminology because people get weird. Um, Okay, so we got, this is the initial spice mix, and uh, I did want to use whole coriander seed, uh, which is, you know, it is cilantro, it's a cilantro seed technically, so obviously I hate it, but in, in this form, it doesn't really bother me as much, so I'm, I'm cool with it, but, um, and I wanted to use whole seed, but uh, I couldn't find it, so now at this point, we're just going to add, I'm going to add about a, I don't know, about a teaspoon and a half worth-ish, ooh, too much. It's okay. <laughs> it's a spice mix. It's a scooter shop. Okay? It's a scooter shop. And then, uh, even more importantly, everybody, I want everybody to have one of these at home. Okay? Like, this costs the same, at, oh, it costs a little bit more than, than um, pre-ground nutmeg. But uh, grinding or grating your own nutmeg is one of the most important things you can do to, uh, to just to amp up anything you might use nutmeg in, apple pie, um, uh, uh, eggnog, this spice mix, any other spice mix, um, it it it, just, it it tastes so much better. It tastes so much more floral and brighter than the crap that you get in a in a uh, in a jar. And I'm gonna grate likewise. I'm gonna probably do about a quarter of a nutmeg, which I, again I made the joke in the. Uh, in the video that I don't know what these are called. I know it's not a nut. Um, I know it's not a Meg. I saw the movie and it checks out. So I'm not entirely sure what it is. That smells so good. It smells like the holidays, honestly. Yeah, I'm gonna do about a quarter of a whole nut. Whoop, whoops. There we go. All right, good enough. Okay, and that concludes. Ooh, I graded my finger pretty good. That concludes the spice mix portion of the show. You can keep this in an airtight container for, I believe, I believe the rule of thumb for freshly ground spices is three months. But don't quote me on that because I don't want anybody to get sick on my account or anything. But these, these were all st shelf stable spices to begin with, so I can only imagine that their shelf life is, in, is indefinite, just like their whole counterparts. But 
I also don't know. So <laughs> I'm not gonna be an authority on that, but we have plenty for what we're doing today and I have plenty left over for the next time I wanna make some tikka masala. So that is our spice mix. Next up we have to get into marinating our chicken, which I admittedly probably should have done before the live stream, because then I could have been like, here's the chicken, it's marinated. But, uh, well, you know, that's life. So I'm going to grab this cutting board over here, just to chap up my chicken, because I don't feel like, you know, I'd rather watch this than wash my entire uh, countertop here of chicken juice. So here we go. I got some nice air chilled chicken breast. Now somebody uh, brought up, and I'll talk about more about this later, but somebody in the comments brought up very astutely that um, I always uh, recommend cooking chicken to 165 degrees Fahrenheit internal. And that's because I have to assume that most people watching these videos are getting chicken from their local uh, grocery store, which I would want to cook to 165 degrees Fahrenheit to be safe. Uh, the average grocery store is gonna be selling chicken if you're, if you're not buying you know, some kind of free range organic stuff or whatever, it's gonna be carrying chicken that um, you don't know what kind of conditions it was, it was being kept in. And uh, it could be very, very, not very, very, but it could be dangerous. I, I, I remember looking up the percentage of uh, chicken in the United States with sal salmonella and it was some shocking percentage. I, again, I should really know these things off the top of my head. I think it was something like 30%, some crazy number of supermarket chicken has has salmonella just chilling. Um, and uh, you gotta be careful of that. And um, I love cooking chicken to 150 degrees-ish Fahrenheit uh, when I know where it's from and I trust that it came from uh, a, a place where the chicken was kept healthily and happily and then was transported safely and then butchered safely. If you have a local butcher that you know and you trust, cook that to 150 degrees Fahrenheit by all means. If you're buying something from a supermarket, cook it to 165. I know it's gonna be a little drier, it's gonna be a little stringier, but like dry chicken is a small price to pay for not getting crazy sick. If you've ever had salmonella, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so what we need to do is, I need to pull up the recipe because Jake, I appreciate the, uh, the help, but um, I think you're gonna have to read super chats and questions to me because I, I, I do need the recipe here. Cause I don't right, remember we got the some good ones. Is. Hit me, hit me, hit me. First and foremost, Crazy J Man 80. 50 Crazy bucks. Crazy J Man. Crazy J Man 80, thank you so much. That is incredibly generous. And $50 super chat from Crazy J Man 80. Thank you. Appreciate it. They're What's looking the for some more anime. Uh, they love Love Live Sunshine. Love Live Sunshine. Love Live Sunshine. A couple of characters cook some food. Uh, they dubbed Yusoro Yakisoba, Tears of the Fallen Angel, and Stew Shine. So that sounds like something. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, that does sound like something. Uh, dude, thank you so much for the incredibly generous super chat. Always want to do more anime food. Um, always looking for more ideas. So thank you very much. We're going to look into that. I can tell you for sure that the next anime food that I'm going to do is going to be the breakfast from... Um, Howl's Moving Castle, which is just bacon and eggs, but it's a great opportunity to show how to make bacon from scratch. Because I'm guessing that uh, in Howl's Moving Castle, they didn't, they weren't going to the supermarket and they were, and they weren't picking up, uh, you know, bacon, uh, Oscar Mayer bacon. So uh, the, the 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 opportunity to cure and smoke my own bacon. Very excited to do that. I have an indoor smoker, uh, which is a, a stovetop smoker. It's like this big. It almost looks like a metal casserole with a metal top on it. And you just put wood chips in the bottom and hit it over medium high heat and let it smoke. And I'm gonna to try to do that with pork belly and I'm gonna cure it for seven days, smoke it for an hour and a half and see if I can make some halfway decent bacon uh, without ever setting foot outside. We'll see. Um, but thank you so much for the extremely generous super chat and thank you for the idea. Anything else? Yeah, we got a hundred bucks from In-N-Out. In-N-Out like the burger? Well, Please? that's, so they claim, and they're asking for the hamburger from Eddie Murphy's Raw. Oh my God, I was just thinking about that the, the other day. That's crazy. Well, in and out whether you're the restaurant or just a person named in and out legally, um, thank you so much for an incredibly generous super chat that is extremely kind. Um, 
and uh, your voice has been heard loud and clear because I was just thinking about that the other day. I almost have that routine memorized where, where, she, where she's like, go in the fridge, get a red pepper, get a green pepper, bring it back here. And then he, 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 was, he was talking about um, how the, uh, the hamburger was almost like a meatball between two slices of bread and all the juices from the burger would turn the bread pink. And he was outside crying with his friends and they were all like, I got McDonald's. And <laughs> it's, a, it's a, a classic bit. And I was just thinking about that. I was wondering if people would want to see that because it sounded like a pretty nasty burger. It sounds like the burger that at one point everyone's parents made for them at some point in their lives. Just totally. like meatloaf burger, essentially. Um, so How would you make it better? I, I wouldn't. There's no way to make that better. <laughs> If I remember correctly, she chops up onions and peppers and puts and mixes them into the meat. That's meatloaf. That's that's. Uh, and, and I love that she calls it better than McDonald's. Like I might like gourmet food. I like I might enjoy um, you know and be a proponent of cooking for yourself and 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 um, uh, that things from your own kitchen are going to taste a thousand times better than any fast food except for a Big Mac. Man, Th there's no. There's, there's no competition. Big Macs are one of the pinnacles of human achievement. And uh, I am not sponsored by McDonald's, nor do I uh, believe that uh, they are a, a good or a healthy presence for uh, humanity. But I will treat myself to a Big Mac once a year because I have to, because I, like the rest of America, am addicted. Um, anywho, <laughs> we're going off the rails here. Any other questions I should hit before I get into this uh, chicken? We got 20 bucks from Pretty Random 88. Uh, Pretty Random 88, what's up? And they're asking for so more much. anime as well uh, from restaurants from another world, which I think you showed me once. And uh, it looks I groovy. Definitely didn't show you that. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Maybe Ari um, showed me. That definitely sounds like an Ari thing. Um, you guys have met Ari one time. Uh, he, was, he was around here. Oh boy, did I not get yogurt? Because that's going to be a real bummer. I have to like pretend that I have yogurt in front of all these people. Thank goodness they can't hear me right now. Yeah, I don't remember getting yogurt. I, I, I could have sworn I ordered it with the. Oh, Amazon you got it on Prime the Prime order. order. Yeah. Did I like not put it in the fridge or something? Because I will seriously lose my mind. Uh, oh no. Is it in Did the I, Prime I'm bags a, over I, there? I, hang on a second, folks. I'm gonna uh -oh. go check the Prime bags. If I didn't Crisis. take this out of here, I'm in real trouble. Crisis. I'm in real human trouble. No, it's not in here. I, I do vaguely remember it. I remember, I remember getting the chicken and one other thing out of the refrigerated bag. So where in the heck is it? I will find it. Just give me a moment, folks. I apologize. We need yogurt to, to, to keep going here. T chicken tikka masala, by definition, is marinated in, not by definition, but pretty much uh, is uh, marinated in yogurt. And I need yogurt to continue. I really do. <laughs> Where is it? Did I put it in the freezer or something? Was I stoned? What's going on? Um, I'd like to thank all the commenters who are offering their yogurt. Uh, oh, dude. guys, thank you so much. Appreciate it. If you want to come by real quick, uh, I'm, I'm over here at an address that I'm not going to say out loud. Where's, oh my god, oh no. Dude, I don't think I have yogurt. <laughs> um, hmm. Okay, well. But I, I could have sworn, I could have sworn when I took the yogurt. Um, I'm sorry, folks. Very sorry for the delay here. Are people just like dropping off right now? Are the numbers just plummeting? <laughs> Why am I watching a, a man's back? <laughs> Oh, they guys, I'm so out. sorry. They hang it out, they know. Well, I appreciate it, folks. Uh, this might turn into a, a very long AMA in a second here because, um, wow. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that I got yogurt, which kind of sinks me right now. I'm sure that there are alternatives. I'm sure that you could use, like, sour cream or something. I'm yeah, we might have sure. to take this live stream on the road. <laughs> Is that even possible? Uh, just throw it up and uh, yeah, do a drive time live. 
J uh, all right, I know this sounds crazy, but like, can you come in here and look and make sure that I'm not being yeah, yeah. blind I'll right look. now? I'll look. Just because I, I, I could have sworn. Okay, I'm gonna try to keep people entertained while, uh, <laughs> while we try and fix this problem here. Guys, I'm so sorry. I think I might have neglected to get yogurt. Um, Do you think Dwayne Reed would have it? And then run it down real quick. They might. We need unflavored yogurt. Um, yeah. Do, do, you, do you mind just looking in here and make sure that I'm not just like overlooking it somewhere? Um, sorry, folks. Apologize about that. Just looking for some uh, Greek yogurt that I could have sworn I ordered. Um, really could have sworn. Don't see any All right. What about the drawer fridges? Can you just we peek in those real quick? Um, yeah, this might turn into a lengthy uh, AMA. Or does anybody have ideas for what we can marinate chicken in other than yogurts for yeah, chicken tikka yeah. masala? Um, let's see here. Let's see here. Hey, folks. Thank you, Vincent Cross, for deleting a whole bunch of what look like uh, erroneous messages. Let's uh -huh. see. Can they see that it was Vin doing that? Yeah. I, I can see it, but yeah, I'm, I'm an administrator. I don't know. Can you guys see that Vin Vincent is deleting comments like a madman? Um, all right. You got it? No. No. All right. All right. Okay. Could, yeah. Could you, man? Um, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Dwayne Reed or, or uh, yeah, Dwayne Reed's probably the closest, right? He's got, probably got personal ones, but they're probably going to, is it okay if I yeah. like, a little sweetened, you know, like no. A <laughs> it's, a, it's just got to be unsweetened, any kind of yogurt that is not sweetened, not flavored. Uh, normally you want to use full fat, but I don't care. You can get 0% as long as it's not sweetened, not flavored. Coffee. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Wow, guys. Calamitous. <laughs> Check, check out Vinny's Instagram for the yeah, for yeah. Green Reed selection of yogurt. Yeah, go do, yeah. yeah or do do it, live stream the, uh, <laughs> the traveling to Dwayne Reed. All right, guys, go check out Vincent Cross on Instagram. On Instagram, I think he might uh, live stream his his quest for yogurt. We'll see. I'm gonna freshen up my drink here because I think we're gonna be answering questions for a few minutes. Um, you know, in that vein, I might grab a chair actually. Um, Okay, I'm just going to, I'm going to grab a chair, folks, and I'm going to, um, I'm going to answer some questions because uh, why not, you know, we, uh, we have a few minutes here. We have to wait for uh, Vincenzo to, uh, that's not going to fit back here, is it? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got it. All right, nice. Okay, folks. Thanks, Jake. Okay, folks, let's do a little Q&A, shall we? I'm going to tilt the camera up a little bit so you can see, see what's going on here. These are our funky office chairs. Ah, let's say, oh, that needs to be a little bit higher. A little bit higher. <laughs> We're figuring this out. It's been a little while since we did the last live stream. Yeah, uh, but I'm excited for you to show them all the different ways you can sit in these chairs. It's true. Oh, oh, thank you for reminding me because uh, yeah, I totally wouldn't uh, I've done that. That's important. Okay, let's take a look here. All right, there we go. Look at that. There we go. I should have shaved my head today. I didn't realize I was gonna be on camera. I'm looking a little scruffy. So here we are, <laughs> because I uh, forgot um, <clears throat> Greek yogurt. Apparently, uh, thank you guys for joining. And I think we're gonna do a little bit of a an AMA right now because we need to, some yogurt to continue this episode. So coconut milk works fine. I don't have any coconut milk. We do have a $50 super chat here that from uh, a Sean Carey saying, seeing as how much your t uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles New York pizza was criticized for not being authentic enough, have you ever thought of doing a redemption video? Maybe using uh, the film Do the Right Thing as a backdrop. I think that I definitely want to do a redemption video um, regardless for a lot of different episodes. Uh, I feel like there's lots of episodes. Most of the time when you're seeing me cook something on this show, it's for the first time. And uh, I, 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 th th there's many episodes I could name that I'd really love to redeem myself, like um, Harry Potter uh, pumpkin pasties. Uh, those are apparently um, savory in real life, and I made them sweet. I made like m pumpkin hand pies, essentially. And um, so I'd love to redeem myself on that. 
Uh, as a New Yorker, I would like to do a more authentic uh, New York style pizza. I will just say that pizza at home is hard. Uh, here's Sawyer laughing in there. Is, is, is some, somebody saying something funny? Honestly, I was just laughing at someone telling you to put the chicken in the fridge. <laughs> okay, I'll put the chicken in the fridge. It'll, it'll survive a few minutes. No, you know what? No, I'm not going to bow to the... <laughs> to the uh, I'm just kidding. Um, the, 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 generally speaking, you know, th think about the amount of time it takes you to get chicken home from the grocery store. And if you're, you know, not spending that much time just chilling, waiting for Vinny to bring uh, yogurt back from Dwayne Reed, uh, <laughs> you should be fine. Um, but, uh, oh, Sawyer wanted, sh wanted me to show you all the different ways that you can sit in these chairs. We actually got these chairs because they're just uncomfortable enough that they make us want to stand to work at our, at our stand to work desks. So you can sit in this the classic way, as you can see. I'm going to lift this up so you can see the entire affair. As you can see, it's kind of a curved seat. <laughs> This is going off the rails. Um, and you can sit in it sideways if you want to be like a cool teacher, kind of, you know? It's like, you know, hey guys, A's for everyone, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> and then uh, if you want to be a really cool teacher, what you do is you unlock it. There we go. Unlock it like this. And then be like, hey gang, let's rap, all right? I hear you guys are you know, smoking drugs, and that you don't care about your families, and I just want you to know that I'm there for you, yo. And, <laughs> I don't know, it's just, <laughs> uh, so uh, there's different ways you can sit in this chair. You know, here, here we are. What's up? Vinny's calling me. Hold on. Oh, God, they don't have Greek yogurt at Dwayne Reed. Oh, We're let's sunk. Let's see. Let's see. This live stream is over Hello. before it started. What's up? <laughs> can they hear you right now? I hope they can, but, um, so, All right, let uh, see. they just have Giovanni plain, Giovanni, uh, plain, no fat. Yeah, that's fine. That's yeah, fine. As long as it doesn't Greek. have uh, sugar or flavor. Hold on. Yeah. I can't hear you. Yeah. That's good. Obviously, just so you guys know, you want to be using full hold fat on. yogurt hold in on. this, in this, uh, Yeah. So that's scenario. good. Andy, sorry. I can't hear you. Is that good? B but, um, Should you get that? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. Can you hear me? That's good. Yeah, no, we're good. Um, so obviously you want to be using full fat yogurt in this, uh, in this scenario, but since we're in kind of a um, emergency situation, uh, we're, we're going to use uh, fat free yogurt and uh, I will remind newcomers of that when I start using it. Man, my face is shiny. I, I'm using this new um, serum because I want to stay, I want to try to keep looking young, even though I look solid 10 years older than I am. Uh, and look how shiny it made me. Look what they did to your boy, Sawyer. Look what they did to your baby boy. They it made looks it great. It looks great in OBS. Are, you're not looking in OBS. You see the condensed, compressed I version. I found a good angle, and I'm just gonna stay here. How's the viewership doing? Are we like dying right now? <laughs> I don't know. But we should speak to the viewers that watch this while they're asleep. Yeah. Hey. So to everybody who. Uh, watches my show while they're asleep, uh, we thank you. We should explain, we should explain that this gets put on sometimes, we think, these live streams get put on automatically. Yeah. When people just watch the show and fall asleep. Yeah. Can they hear you right now, or? Yeah, yeah, they can hear Okay, me. all right, all right. Well, so Sawyer just explained this. Um, <laughs> yeah. That uh, uh, YouTube often recommends uh, uh, my live streams to folks who put on my show when they go to sleep, because they're like, People are watching Babish uh, between uh, midnight and you know 7 a.m. Eastern, and uh, they they must like uh, they seem to like really long ones. So that YouTube just the algorithm just starts suggesting um, uh, uh, the live streams, and the live streams have become the some of the most by 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 uh, minutes viewed some of the most viewed videos on the channel, <laughs> uh, which is hilarious uh, because. We, we see that it, you know, these are like between one and three hour, four hour long live streams. And we see that they have like a 50% viewer retention rate, which means that 50% of the people who tune in to watch it, watch the whole thing, which is just, that's not what happens with live streams. So we figured out people are putting this on before they go to sleep and it just plays while they sleep. And uh, we, as such, we put a couple uh, mid-roll commercials in there. 
and thank you. Just want to say thank you for, wa for watching me while you sleep. <laughs> um, and that's what Bedtime with Babish was for, that uh, uh, um, hibernating, I'll say it, uh, I'll put it that way, hibernating podcast that uh, is going to lie and wait until um, I have the time and the ability to do it. But like I was saying before, we're working on this new show called Being with Babish, which is a, it's a travel vlog show, and it takes a tremendous amount of time, effort, and money. And uh, that's our big focus right now. We're actually going and shooting episode three tomorrow uh, in Brooklyn, and uh, we're very excited to surprise somebody with that. Um, and we think that you guys will like it too. So please uh, tune in. The episode will premiere not next fri Friday, but the following Friday. A little bit of a delay because we couldn't shoot until... I got 50 Canadian dollars here. Hang on a second. Hang on a second, folks. Ravi, 50 Canadian dollars. Thank you so much. Uh, love your channel. Great work. Cooking Master Boy anime for Chinese dishes. It's like Yu-Gi-Oh, Dragon Ball Z, and Master Chef combined. Some great low or no carb meals for diabetics would be appreciated as well. Be wary of refrigerator blindness. What is refrigerator blindness? Does that have to do with masturbation or what does that mean? Um, I, I haven't heard of uh, that show. I'm going to check it out. Thank you very much for the suggestion. Um, low or no carb meals for diabetics, absolutely something that I want to look into. Wow, that was fast. He's back, folks. So, Ravi, thank you so much for the very generous super chat. My man Vinny is here with... That's plenty. Perfect. Thank you. You just saved the entire live stream. My man Vinny is here. He saved the day with some yogurt. Appreciate it, man. I'm going to get this chair out of here. Oh, God. I've trapped myself in with the chair. Oh, jeez. Here we go. Okay, let's get this chair out of here. Get on out of here. Okay, we're back in business, folks. Here we go. I'm going to tilt the camera back down here. I know that this seems a little ramshackle, but uh, we're, we're just getting back into this for the first time, and uh, we would love it. We, 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 we appreciate your patience, and we'd love it if you stuck around with us, because we're about to get back into cooking. Thank you guys so much for, for putting up with that, and uh, glad we got ourselves a little AMA session there, even though I think I really only answered like one question. Um, here we go. Let's build us a marinade. So, I'm going to pull up my recipe here just so I know what I'm doing. We need a cup of full fat yogurt, and these guys are, what are these, 5.3 ounces. So, not quite two of these, but uh, close enough. I don't care. Let's grab, Vinny, can you close that door? Sorry. It's just to keep uh, Sawyer and my, and my mic from, from playing too nice. Appreciate it. Okay. So, you guys are really getting a glimpse behind the curtain here and really seeing how the sausage is made. I hope you like it because uh, that's what's going on here every day at Babish Enterprises. Um, really, it's actually called Binge Entertainment LLC, just so you know. Um, here we go. So, these are each not quite one cup of yogurt and these are uh, th th these are fat free. Normally you want to use full fat, but we were in an emergency situation, so we, we, made, a, we made a judgment call. Uh, Vinny, thank you so much again for going out and grabbing those. And uh, you know, the recipe calls for one cup of yogurt, so I'm just going to kind of, that's fine. That's good enough. You know, it's a, it's a marinade. Marinades are one of the things in life that you can be a little bit inexact and a little bit, um, you know, just wing it a little bit, you know? The odds of it getting royally screwed up from being eyeballed are extraordinarily low. So don't beat yourself up and just try it, you know? What's the worst that can happen? Except for food poisoning, but you'd have, again, you'd have to really screw it up. So just don't, just don't screw it up, that's all. Okay, next up we need some ginger. So I'm gonna grab a uh, garbage bowl here, just so I don't have to go off camera. I loved the concept of the garbage bowl until I got a garbage right next to my workstation. And now I'm just like, oh, just go over here and do it. But I want to stay on camera. I want to be present. I want to be, I want to be an absent dad for you guys. I want to be there for you, okay? So now I know that, uh, in fact, you know, I'm, you know what? I'm going to employ this trick right now that I learned recently. <coughs> Far too late in life, if you ask me is 
to uh, peel ginger with a spoon instead of a vegetable peeler because um, it's a bit more arduous, but you can really get into all the, the nooks and crannies there in the way that a vegetable peeler simply cannot. Jeez. Oh, and then for these big parts, I think we'll, peel, oh, you know, okay. For the big parts, I'm going to use the peeler because that is my right as a human being. You know, the vegetable peeler gets in there just fine. But I get it. Sometimes there's those little pieces you can't quite get. But I, I, I don't think a spoon is any easier per se. It's just, um, it's just different. It's a different sensation. It's like um, I'm trying to think of anything that's not sexual to use as a metaphor. And I can't, so I'm going to shut up. Um, and uh, I, I, I'm going to peel all of this ginger because I'm going to use, I'm definitely going to use all of it. Uh, the recipe calls for about two inches of ginger for each element, for the marinade and for the sauce. And the, um, that's pretty much all I have here. This isn't even four inches, but it's a nice wide, it's a nice fat piece of ginger. So it should suffice for both. Again, this is a marinade. Eyeball it. It's fine. As long as you refrigerate it properly and don't give yourself food poisoning. If anything, you know, it might taste a little funky and you'll learn. You'll learn like, oh, that tasted funky because I added too much X or I didn't add enough Y. And uh, there we go. All right, so we got that nice and peeled and I'm gonna grab my microplane. Uh, I want the really fine microplane. Is this my fine one? I don't think it is. Hang on a second, folks, sorry. That's whatever. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and grate this ginger. I'm gonna grate half of it into our marinade here. Uh, normally you wanna go for about two inches worth, depending on the width of your ginger. I'm gonna go for more like an inch, inch and a half, uh, because I need some for the sauce later. And I need some to hold on to, like, you know, yeah, I, could, I could grate this down to here and do two inches and still have some left, but then it would be almost impossible to grate. You know, do the math, guys. That's all. That's all it takes. What am I missing over there? I, I don't have the uh, the chat open, so am I missing anything vital question-wise? Any big super chats? Any interesting queries? Got uh, 50 bucks from Noob Central telling you. Noob Central, to, thank you so weird, much. But your voice honestly helps me fall asleep. That's really nice. That is really nice. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate that you that you like it and that. Um, <laughs> you, you know what always freaks people out is when they see me say the the intro words to the show. If they see my face and I come down here and I go, "Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish." With and I, I guarantee that just weirded some people out, um, which is fun to me. So, uh, two garlic cloves grated. I'm gonna grab this uh, clove of garlic here and I'm gonna give her a little, uh, ooh, too big of a smash. Got a little excited there. Ooh, and these guys are already jumping out of their skins. This is my favorite kind of garlic. Vinny, I'm pretty sure you picked up this garlic, so I think I have you to thank. Um, so we're, we're grating uh, the garlic and the ginger here because we want, this is a marinade, we wanna maximize flavor and uh, if any, if, I mean, if you learn anything from from Brad Leone, it's that uh, that uh, you, you, you got you got to you got to break down garlic and release the allicin, uh, and it's because it's it's like a two part epoxy. <laughs> I'm sorry, I remember all the uh, all of his allicin jokes. Um, so I have this weird phobia where I really want to perfectly peel every clove, even if it's arduous like that. Like that was a huge pain, but uh, I don't care. I want to peel down every clove of garlic. What I love about these microplanes is that I can grate the garlic really down to my fingertips. You're not going to cut yourself unless you try really hard. You probably have to grate your fingertips for a couple seconds to, uh, to really cut yourself. Look at that. I, got, I, 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 I grated it right down to the, to the nub and uh, no problem. This this uh, um, AirPod keeps shocking my ear, Jake. Does that ever happen to you? No. It's like what? a static shock. It's a, st <laughs> it's, a, it's a static shock. Whenever I move too much, it's, it's, it's giving me a little zap. 
That's bad. <laughs> I think it's me, man. I think I, I think I have like like a static curse. I've always been more staticky than anybody I've ever met. Mercury in your blood. It's the mercury. You know what? It's the mercury. In my, you're absolutely right. Um, okay, sorry. I'm just rinsing off my microplane because I do need it later. So I'm just gonna give it a little rinse. Okay, so we have our garlic and our ginger here. <laughs> and then I'm also going to add a tablespoon of our homemade garam masala curry powder. I'm going to do a heaping tablespoon, if anything, a tablespoon and a half, because all we're doing is just imbuing our chicken with flavor. And it's very, it's very hard to screw that up, like I've been saying repeatedly, so I'm sorry if I'm sounding like a broken record. I'm also going to add a, like a tablespoon's worth of uh, kosher salt-ish, like that. And uh, a few twists of, uh, you know, ground, freshly ground black pepper. You guys know how I feel about kosher salt and freshly ground black pepper. They're kind of big deals for me. So I'm going to get some good twists of that in there. You have to imagine your amount of chicken, like I'm seeing the chicken that I'm going to be marinating here. And you have to imagine, just picture the chicken breasts laid out before you. How much would you twist over them if they were cooked and you were just seasoning them over both sides, really? So that's why I put so much pepper in, because I'm like, three chicken breasts. That's one side, that's the other side of one chicken breast. Like, it's pretty hard to overdo it, especially in a marinade. So now I'm just going to give these guys a mix until they are homogenous, one of my favorite words, if you couldn't tell from my millions of uses of it. Give that a mix roux. There we go. Oh, I guarantee this is like the most flavorful substance in the known universe right now. There's, there's freshly toasted and ground spices. There's freshly grated uh, ginger and garlic. I mean, this, this is some seriously, seriously flavor, flavorful stuff. What's really cool about yogurt is that it creates a beautiful brown crust on the outside of chicken, even on like chicken breasts, even on the most boring meat known to mankind, chicken breast, it, uh, it, it, it will create a, a beautiful layer of, um, of Maillard and of, of, of browning. Um, so we have our nice marinade here. Is that blown out, Jake? Does, is, is that like white on your screen? All right, I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and crank that down a little bit. How's that, better? All right. Now you can see the marinade. How about that, folks? Yay, I just heard applause. So that's, especially I hold it at that angle, perfect. That's our yogurt-based marinade, which I'm now going to toss the chicken in. I have three chicken breasts here. And to the dismay of some folks, I'm going to use gloves because I like being able to cook and not having to wash my hands in between every time I touch a piece of chicken. Uh, it's very handy, and I know that this isn't awesome uh, for, the, for the environment, but um, what it really comes down to, actually, is a, is a difference between throwing away plastic versus wasting water. And uh, it seems like those are two, you know, equal concerns environmentally. Um, so I personally would rather throw away a, a very thin layer of plastic than waste, you know, I don't know how much water it takes to uh, wash your hands three, four times when, when you're uh, handling chicken. Anyway, I'm taking a stance I probably shouldn't right now, so I'm going to go ahead and shut up and play the hits. Opening up my chicken, which I see is a little bit juicy, so I'm going to grab some paper towels here. There we go. So we can pat our chicken dry because there's a little bit of liquid going on in there. Always give them a little smell to make sure they're good. These guys smell a little sulfuric, but that's because of their vacuum packaging. You will find that with a lot of vacuum-packed chicken, if you don't rinse it, you're going to get this kind of kind of kind of rotten egg smell com coming off of it. Obviously, you want to be very very wary of any chicken that smells off. But it, um, vacuum sealed chicken in particular has a kind of a strange smell to it, and you, what you really want to do is rinse it and make sure. That it, see, it's, our, it's already pretty much gone. Uh, just make sure that it doesn't remain because I'm feeding this to my friends and I don't want to kill them. I'm just a nice guy like that. All right. And I also don't really believe in rinsing chicken that much just because, like, what you're really rinsing off is the things that, like, when, when they put the chicken into the vacuum pack, 
it was dry. And we, we were really rinsing off is just the liquid that was exuded from the chicken itself. So it's not like you're getting rid of some toxins or something. You're just getting rid of like, it doesn't really matter. Um, anywho, we're going a little bit too deep here. So now I'm going to cut this into about one inch pieces ish. Just, you know, think, think of every uh, Indian takeout you've ever gotten uh, for, of tikka masala and cut it into those size pieces. That's the key here, is that we are making tikka masala and we want to try to imitate that to the best of our ability. What am I missing over there, fellas? Anything good? 50 pounds sterling. 50 pounds sterling. From, from Luke Deary. From Luke Deary. Thank you very much, Luke. That is extremely generous. Thank you so much. What does Luke have to say? He said, do boneless pizza. Okay, guys, come on. <laughs> is that joke not old yet? <laughs> but thank you very much for the very generous donation. I'm just saying, uh, we, uh, pizza's boneless, and we get it, and I don't know. What am I supposed to do, you know? But thank you very much for, for a very kind contribution, extremely generous co contribution. I will keep, I bet if I did that, it would still go crazy viral, wouldn't it? That's still like a, a hot enough topic that it, people would go kind of nuts. But I'll tell you something, pizza's already bone, boneless, I tried. All right, there's our chicken, which I'm now going to drop into our yogurt marinade. Did my pronunciation of that just make some people mad? I'm sure it did. Um, hang on, I'm just getting rid of all of our chickeny stuff. And with my gloves still on here, I'm just going to grab this and give it a little tossy toss. And make sure that everybody is nicely coated with our marinade. And ideally we want to let this go for like a, at least an hour, if not like four to six hours. But obviously we're not doing that right now. We're, we're, tr we're trying to have a nice breezy live stream. So what I'm probably gonna do is, um, is cover this, get all the other mise en place ready, answer a few questions, and then we'll get into cooking. It might only be half an hour because, uh, come on guys, you know, we all have lives to, to live. I'm sure you guys don't wanna sit here in front of a computer all night. Vinny's going to see a show tonight. Who are you going to see, Vin? He doesn't have to get up and answer that. So, Jake, you, you, if you want, you, you can. I don't want to blow up his spot either. Chris I? Oh, no. Wait, but now what if a fan traces him there? Sorry, Ben, you can't go, you can't go to the show anymore. <laughs> Sorry, we just blew up Ben's spot real bad. All right, so now I'm just ripping off my gloves off camera. I apologize. And you'll notice that uh, I didn't waste any water. So we have that all marinated and ready, or marinating rather, ready to go. I'm gonna hit this with some Glad Press and Seal. Glad Press and Seal for when you wanna press and seal. I'm sorry. Um, I'm not actually sponsored by Glad Press and Seal, but I do use it often enough that if they wanted to sponsor me, I'd be like, yeah, brother. Because uh, this stuff works, man. <laughs> That's cool. This is this just created a watertight seal. Like I could I could go swimming with this and it would be fine. Um, <laughs> so okay, that goes in the fridge for ideally one to six hours. Again, this is a yogurt marinade. You probably don't want to overdo it because there are enzymes in yogurt that tenderize chicken. You might end up with some kind of mushy chicken if you go for like 12, 24 hours or something like that. Um, Actually, what am I saying? You, you use buttermilk to marinate um, chicken. That's full of en enzymes, and you, you let that go for 24 hours. This would probably be fine for 24 hours. Um, I should really do an experiment and find out, but I don't know for right now. So um, for, for now, it's just going to have to remain a mystery. Uh, okay, so while, uh, while we're waiting for that, uh, let's do some questions. Let's do some super chats. What do we got? Ooh, bunch. We have Tammy Jennings, 20 Australian dollars. I have three teenagers who love watching your channel with me for cooking ideas. Thank you from all of us. Thank you, Tammy, and thank you, Tammy's three ch teenagers. Thank you guys for watching, and, uh, and uh, thank you guys for cooking with your mom. I hope that you're, co that you're cooking with, uh, with your mom or for your mom. Uh, either way, 
it's, it's a very nice way to connect with each other, and, uh, and I appreciate being a part of it. I appreciate you guys letting me into your lives like that. Um, what else we got here? We got 10 pounds sterling from Luke Deary. Uh, why do you use yellow American for your Frito pie instead of pepper jack, which is Hank's favorite? I remember you actually addressing this in the voiceover that I was like, pepper jack is Hank's favorite, so, so wouldn't, uh, 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 wouldn't Peggy do that? But I concluded that Peggy is such a stubborn person. She's so set in her ways and thinks that she knows best about everything. She's a true sociopath, and that's why Sawyer and I love her. Um, but but, but d d for, with that line of thinking, it made me think that like she wouldn't care if Pe Hank's favorite cheese is pepper jack. Like she said, she said, I made it just the way you like, perfect. She didn't say I made it just the way you like, period. She said I made, I made it just the way you like, perfect, aka my way. So that's, that's where that line of, uh, line of thinking came from. Thank you for asking, thank you for the super chat. $50 from Noobs, oh we already did this. Thank you so much for listening to me while you fall asleep, Noob Central. We got 20 bucks from Comic A1. I've been watching your show for a very long time now. I just wanted to say that I love the way you work and I have saved a few recipes from your various episodes. You always make me smile. Thank you, that's so nice to hear. I love making you smile and I, and I love that you, you're saving recipes. I hope you try them yourselves. This recipe in particular is a lot of fun. It's not that hard. Like you're looking at, you know, w w without marination time, you're looking at like a uh, total, I don't know, 30 active minutes with uh, an hour to marinate and you've got some incredibly flavorful, vibrant uh, chicken tikka masala, and um, I really recommend trying this one. Uh, so thank you for watching, and I'm happy to, to help make you smile. You Have Horses uh, gave $10 and said hi. Hi, You Have Horses. Thank you so much for the super chat. Really appreciate it. <coughs> Robert Pasqui uh, gave five pounds sterling and uh, no chat, but thank you very much, Robert. Thank you for your generosity. What else we got here? Who did I miss? We got 50 Canadian dollars. I saw that one. Wow. Um, 100 and, 109.99 euros. That's a strange amount, but wow. Thank you so much. That is extraordinarily generous. Thank you, Thomas Weiler. Uh, food from Goodfellas would be nice another time. I did do the uh, uh, prison sauce. I know that Henry Hill has some meatballs. Uh, so I'd, I'd love to find a way to like confirm what Henry Hill's actual meatball recipe was, and then maybe I will be able to do that. And then we have another super, but thank you very much for your gener generosity and gigantic super chat. There's in and out again, thank you so much in and out and that's a really funny, I'd really like to know if that's actually like in and outs account. Can, you, can we, hang on, I'm gonna go to their channel real quick and see what it is. No, the 115 subscribers, it's not, it's not uh, in and outs actual channel, but that's, that's hilarious that you use the actual uh, logo and the name, and you, you, you really threw me for a loop. But thank you for an incredibly kind uh, um, uh, 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 super chat. And I'd also like to thank all the new members here today. YouTube memberships are a way to take a look at um, episodes a day early. I post all episodes one day early uh, for YouTube members and uh, Patreon exclusively. Um, if you're already a patron, uh, it's the exact same benefits level as the $5 Patreon level, uh, and it's $5 to become a YouTube member. And it's a way to see things early. I always share things there before I share them anywhere else. It's a way to um, take a look behind the scenes, because we'll post behind the scenes stuff, we'll post, post bloopers. Uh, literally two days ago, just posted some uh, bloopers from the scene of uh, me and Sawyer in the Vegas hotel room where I had the um, towel wrapped around my head uh, and, and was wearing the robe. And um, uh, so you, you get access to things like that and uh, you get access to announcements and all that good stuff. So check out channel memberships. It might be something that you're interested in. And we just got a new one, Nathaniel Fry. Thank you for becoming a member. We got another one, uh, Taha Sid Siddiqui. Uh, thank you very much for becoming a member. Uh, really appreciate it, guys. And um, thank you, Super Chats members, Anybody, who, anybody who's watching or sharing the channel, uh, your support means the world to us, all of us, and um, 
And uh, also, especially with the new show, like I was saying, the new show is, is a big uh, passion project for us and we uh, are very excited to share it with you and to try new things and, 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 and try to push the limits of you know, what three people can create on YouTube. Five people sometimes. We do work with uh, some partners of ours, but mostly it's the three of us in here cranking away, making a show that, that we think is exceeding a lot of boundaries for, 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 for what, um, what people are used to seeing on YouTube. And we, we, we want to just keep seeing how far we can push it. And uh, we're very excited about next week's episode. We're very excited about some upcoming episodes. Um, and we have a lot of surprises in store and uh, some, some very fun adventures for you guys to accompany us on. So I hope that you'll join us. Um, well, okay, we have a new $50, uh, I'm sorry, 50 euro, um, 50 euro super chat from Niklas Koskinen. Dude, you, you're giving me too much money tonight. I really appreciate it, but you're giving me so much money, I feel bad. But dude, thank you so much. And um, can we have an episode dedicated to whiskey? And I'm very excited to say that there is a, uh, a, a whiskey uh, basics with Babish coming out. We've shot it. I just have to do the voiceover. I'm not sure when it's coming out. I believe it's coming out in, in um, May. But uh, it, it is coming. It's shot. And uh, I sample something like 14 different whiskeys and talk about their different characteristics and why different people might like them for different reasons. And um, I'd love for you to tune in and check it out. So that is coming. Keep an eye out. And thank you again so much for your incredibly generous super chat and the other super chats you've given tonight. New member, Simon McMatterson. Thank you for becoming a member, bro. Nathaniel Fry just gave $50. Your videos inspired me immensely to get back into cooking. After I got discharged, I fell out of it. And it's been awesome watching you create works of art in the kitchen. I love your videos. Keep it up. That is incredibly kind. Uh, Nathaniel, I'm very happy to have played any role in your getting back into the kitchen and experimenting and having fun. That's the most important part, is that even when you mess up, have fun, learn from it. Why did that happen? What can I try different next time? And, you know, it, it's, it's scary sometimes. I understand why people don't get into cooking sooner and more frequently, but, like, um, I'm going to get down here. Uh, but um, it's such a rewarding process. It's such a rewarding hobby for so many reasons in ways that I can't imagine many other hobbies are, maybe um, music or uh, volunteering. It's just, just, it's an opportunity to connect with people around you and to connect with yourself. And uh, uh, I really appreciate your extremely generous super chat and, um, and uh, uh, keep, keep your chin up and uh, keep cooking, okay? I will if you will. And we have some more here. We have Matthew Bennett ten, just gave $10 trying this again. It's amazing to watch what you do and to watch and what, and what you have done with this channel is amazing. I do some cooking streams on Twitch. And you have been a big inspiration. Yay, whiskey. Yay, whiskey, Matthew. And thank you very much for the super chat. Thank you for the kind words. And thank you for hanging out with us. I really appreciate it. And uh, I, I, I really appreciate it, man. I appreciate all you guys so much. Can't tell you how much I do. Um, I'm trying, but it's, it's hard. We got 4,000 people watching right now, which is pretty damn good for a live stream, I got to say. Um, I'm just here having a whiskey. I'm having an Angel's Envy. I don't know what you guys are drinking, but cheers. Mm. My boys in the other room are drinking the same thing. We got Vincent Cross. We got Sawyer Jacobs. The host's hiss sees with the most uh, And Nick, Nick, Nicholas, I, I can't take it. Your generosity is too much. That's very, very kind. It, he, he just gave 50 euros just to say awesome about the whiskey episode. Dude, thank you so much. I don't know what to say. Like, I, 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 I haven't been, I haven't, I haven't been the recipient of that kind of incredible generosity very often. I'm sorry, more and more often in the past few years than I ever have in my entire life, and I will never get used to it because it is shocking and it is um, profound and it is, it is, it is, it is incredibly kind. So thank you so much. I really appreciate your, your generosity in, in just chatting with me. Um, I kind of want to just give you my number uh, so you can just hit me up directly. You don't have to pay uh, 50 euros every time you, you, you want to say hi. But thank you um, so much. Hannah H. just gave $5 and said, Your videos honestly make my days brighter. You're a true gem. Ever heard of who I consider to be your alcoholic equivalent? How to drink. Of course I've heard of how to drink. In fact, we did a uh, collaborative episode with Greg. Um, it was the, um, the holiday cocktails episode. 
I understand if you haven't seen it because it is a holiday cocktails episode, so kind of out of season right now. But Greg came over and we made some holiday punch and uh, um, he, ta he taught us how to make a few different kinds of eggnogs, like some really classic eggnogs. Apparently it was something that used to be drank at room temperature by, by cowboy toughs back in the day. And uh, we learned a lot from him and he's an amazing guy. And we text all the time. Every time we, we hit different milestones, different s subscriber milestones, every time he has a big video, always text back and forth. Greg's the best. Uh, so Sawyer, my phone just got disconnected from you. I think the earbud is dead. Yeah, it is. So, we're going blind now, folks. Here we go. <laughs> um, hmm, I'm not entirely sure what to do about the earphone situation. I'm just going to take it out. Earbud just died, so we're, 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 we're flying with that, uh, I don't even know the word for it. We're, we're, we're flying blind here. It's, it's fun. It's a good time. So, what else we got going here? Uh, Olivia Featherstone gave $5 and said, where in the world do you think slash hope be, binging slash being with Babish will take you? What do you think you'd like to cook in those places? I honestly don't know. Um, I'd really love to bring being to a much larger audience. I think that um, it's, it's a production that uh, uh, is, is, is worth people's time, and I hope that you guys tune in and give it a watch because uh, episodes one and two are live right now. Thank you. And um, Two quick connects. Did you hear the... Yeah, I just heard the noise. Call me. How long do these things last? That long, I guess? <laughs> That's a valuable lesson learned. Okay. All right, now I have the other one in. There we go. We're going left side now. Thank you, Olivia, for your super chat. I really appreciate it. Weston Zlotnik. Weston Zlotnik gave $20 and said, love the show and, lo and your love for Frasier made me finally w finish watching it and it's one of my favorites. How's now? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just, uh, I love you, man. I love you, Weston. Thank you so much for your very generous super chat. And I'm so happy that you're into Frasier. I can't even explain to you. Um, very happy that you're into Frasier and uh, keep watching. Uh, season one has its on and off moments, but when they're on, man, they're on, okay? Never, never seen anything like it in my life. Five euros from possibly an Irish guy. That makes sense. Hey, Andy, just hey, call me Andy. I, lo I love when people call me Andy because it feels like a weird term of endearment from my old life uh, with my family and my friends from high school. So it's, 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 it's very nice when people call me that. So, um, Hey Andy, just want to say thank you for being so wholesome. It's contagious and helping me out of the current funk of mental health. Thanks, Ciaran. Ciaran, uh, uh, thank you very much for your um, very generous super chat. And um, uh, I'm sorry to hear that you're struggling with mental health. I've been there, man. Um, uh, and uh, it's, it's really tough. It's very, very tough to take the initiative to help yourself because you're the one holding yourself down in that situation. It's kind of like having a broken leg and being mad at yourself that you can't run. And um, I've, I've been there before. I was deeply clinically depressed. Uh, I couldn't get out of bed for two weeks before I went and sought the help that I needed. And once I did, I started finding happiness in my everyday life. And then I found new ways to find happiness. And then before you know it, here I am here. I'm not saying that that's the result of going to therapy. I am saying that um, you never know what can happen from taking the steps to help yourself. And I, I hope that uh, you are seeking the help that you need and uh, stay strong, man. Um, we got uh, da, da, da. Anne Azuria gave 10 Canadian dollars. Will you give, da will you bring David back? The guy has a heart of gold. He's a very, very sweet man. I hope I see him again. I hope we can have him on the show again. Uh, I. I have an aunt that lives down in um, Orlando, or lives near Orlando, and I very hope, I very much hope I can uh, visit her again sometime soon. And in that process, I'd love to see David again. He is a sweetheart, and I do miss him. Nathaniel Fry gave $25. Hey, it's me again. What's up, Nathaniel? I work with special needs kids, and that's pretty rewarding as well, but nothing like the fun times I have in the kitchen with my family and friends. Also, what's your favorite kind of whiskey? Uh, that's very, very noble line of work, man. I really, big respect, like what you're doing is very, very important and so much respect for it. Um, and uh, I'm very happy that you find time to take care of yourself and, and uh, um, cook for yourself and cook for others. That's lovely. And my favorite kind of whiskey, my favorite kind of bourbon in you know, the affordable range is Angel's Envy. This guy's like, you know, 35. 
35, 40 bucks, and it's some of the best bourbon I've crapped my, my mouth around in a while. Um, but thank you so much for the super chat, man. Really, uh, the super chats, uh, really appreciate it. And thank you for doing what you do, because what you do is extremely important, man. Price Whitby gave 48 pounds 99. Uh, hey, love what you're doing. A mate from uni got me in, into your videos and I've been hooked since then. Keep up the great work. Thank you so much, Rice, and thank you for the extremely generous super chat. Uh, I can't thank you all enough. Anybody who I've missed, I'm not trying to focus only on the big super chats, but they're the ones that last the longest. That's just how the system works. So I'm very sorry for anybody that I'm missing and I appreciate all of you and I really wish I could be responding to all of you. Uh, thank you guys so much for hanging out. I really appreciate it. $5 from Tony Urbus. Uh, I've watched literally every episode you have ever released. Absolutely love you, Babs. You inspired me to cook and refine my skills. Thank you so much, Tony. Thank you for your super chat. Keep cooking, man. I will if you will. Sophia Hanif. Uh, uh, gave $20 and said, random Easter question because I don't know what's ask, ask peeps or no peeps. Honestly, I think they're disgusting. Thanks for all you do. I completely agree. I don't like peeps. They are sugar colored, uh, I'm sorry, sugar covered marshmallows and I don't get them. I don't even really, even really get marshmallows unless they're burned to a crisp and put between two graham crackers with some chocolate. Other than that, they're just big airy sugar. I don't know what to call them. They're, they're, I don't like them very much and I don't like peeps especially, so I'm right there with you. Um, Captain Redbeard 647 gave $20 and said, there's a multitude of very interesting foods in the anime Food Wars, and each food is beautifully drawn and described in a detailed manner. I've actually done one, have I done two Food Wars episode or one? I think I've done one, just one. Uh, but I, I, I did the, um, what did I do from Food Wars? Come on. Oh, the pineapple fried rice. Uh, I did the pineapple fried rice from Food Wars. Some of their technique is super sound. Some of, some of it is a little silly, but like everything is gorgeously animated, including the really inappropriate weird shit that goes on in that show. But uh, it, it's been a lot of fun recreating stuff from, from anime, and that one especially has a ton of incredible looking and uh, sounding food. So uh, yeah, thank, thank you, and uh, we'll, I very much look forward to um, recreating more stuff from Food Wars, including like gotcha pork roast. And uh, there, there's a Wagyu, um, I can't remember what it's called, but it's, it's, it's flower shaped and it's uh, Wagyu beef. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to keep doing stuff from that show. So keep an eye out for it. Benjamin O'Dell gave $20 and said, are you excited about the Wegmans opening in New York City Navy, Navy Yard this fall? I couldn't even get the sentence out because I'm so excited. Yes, I'm actually like, kind of hoping that I can move to Brooklyn uh, right nearby so I can be as close to Wegmans as possible. Plus, a friend of Sawyer's and mine uh, lives in that area right now. And so I think that by my moving there and by Sawyer's eventual moving there, we would establish Little Rochester and, and uh, it would become a, uh, a verified part of New York's mythology, we would become Little Rochester. So we would love to found Little Rochester and we will be, uh, our, our efforts will be uh, concentrated there. What do you think, Jake? Oh yeah, it's happening. I've been doing most of my nine to five working here. I've been researching this project. What? what? Well, I mean, I told you about Steiner Studios. Jake, I'm, you mean to tell me that most of the time you're working here, I'm just kidding. Sorry. Um, the, my joke isn't coming off the way I wanted it to, and I'm gonna I'm just gonna let it derail right there, and we're gonna start over. Um, I uh, I hope that we can move there because I would love for us to be able to walk hand in hand to Wegmans as we always imagined we would every morning. Um, ah, you, me, and Vinny in a in a in a line, just holding hands and and blocking, clotheslining people walking down the sidewalk uh, on our way to Wegmans. It's a beautiful dream, and we'll get there one day. Uh, Viraj Mehra gave 100-something. I'm not entirely sure what the currency is. Uh, you're going to use ghee this time, Babby. Also love the new Being with Babbage series. Thank you so much, Viraj. And I forgot to get ghee, and I should have, because I do know that ghee is an essential part of, uh, of Indian cuisine, and it's, it's also an awesome cooking tool. It's essentially just clarified butter. 
And uh, clarified butter is so useful. It's so helpful in the kitchen because it doesn't have any of the, the uh, uh, milk solids, fats, not fats, milk solids that brown and burn when you're heating butter to high heat. So you can heat clarified butter significantly higher than, um, than regular butter and you can sear things in it and you can, it's, it's, it's just great for cooking in high temperatures and it's also a big part of Indian cuisine and it's something that I should really have on hand but I'm very sorry I forgot to get it, I apologize. But thank you for the heads up, I will remember to do that next time. Uh, NA Gaming gave $20 and said, I love you so much Babish, can you say thank you Frankovich? Thank you, Frankovich. Um, <laughs> so I, had to, I, had to, I had to really line up for that one. Uh, th th thank you very much for the very generous super, super chat, and I hope that what I just said was helpful for whatever you're getting up to. 50 euros again. Oh my God, <laughs> Nicholas. Nicholas, what are you doing? <laughs> Nicholas just gave another 50 euros to say, I'm gonna tell you every message is worth 50. Your videos are the best. <laughs> Dude, I don't. I don't know. I all I know all I know how to do for you right now is say, just repeat saying thank you. That's all I know how to, how to do because you're overwhelming me with generosity, and I, I I don't know if I can emotionally take it much longer. I, I really appreciate it, and um, wow, I mean just just wow. And speaking of which, we have fifty dollars from Natalie Valentina. Hey Babish, this week is the fourth anniversary of my mom's passing. She was such an amazing cook and baker, and I know how much she would have loved your channel. Thank you so much for helping me find my way back, doing something we loved together. Uh, Natalie, that's, um, let me get down here again for this one, because uh, obviously that, that hits very close to home. I, I lost my mother when I was 11, and uh, I can't tell you how much it means to me to be part of that process for you. Um, I... Uh, Obviously, you know, the cliches are always true. Time heals all wounds, and that's one that never really heals, but uh, I, I, I wish nothing but the best for you and, um, and hope that you continue cooking uh, because I know it's a way that I feel closer to my mother, and I know it's, it's definitely a way that you, you feel closer to yours, and um, I'm, just, I, I'm, I'm very, very honored to play any part in that. So thank you for sharing. Thank you for the incredibly generous super chat and um, keep cooking. Um, thank you. Um, sorry? Okay, all right, all right. Sorry, sorry. We, we're, we're, we're getting a little emotional in here. Uh, so my, one more thing. We have uh, a name that I'm not going to say because even in its full state, I know what it means. Uh, but $20 from Michael. Thank you, Michael. Hey, Babish, you want to learn to play Dungeons and Dragons for charity? Let me know how to get in contact. That sounds interesting, Jake. That sounds like an episode of Being. You want to shoot that guy, shoot that guy an email? Yeah. You know, uh, if, I, if your email isn't on your uh, account, shoot us an email at uh, bingingwithbabish at gmail. But uh, do, do, do uh, uh, sounds fun. That or Being with Babish at gmail, either, either one to get in contact with us. Being with Babish is a travel vlog kind of show, and I think that would fit very nicely. I think that people would get a real kick out of seeing me learn how to play d and I've only ever played it once before, and I was too in college and too drunk to really appreciate it. So I'd love to do that again. I am going to switch over, guys. Thank you so much for all your incredibly generous Super Chats. I am going to switch back over to cooking now because our chicken has probably been going for what, like 20 minutes now? We're gonna pretend that it went for an hour. It's gonna look the same on camera and that's really all that matters in the television food business. So for the sauce, we might as well get the sauce going because uh, we, can, we, can, we can do that while the chicken continues to marinate. If it gets at least half an hour in there, I'd be very, very happy. Uh, so we need grated ginger, we need a small yellow onion, uh, uh, half a small yellow onion finely minced, uh, grated garlic, small bird's eye chili, vegetable oil, tomato paste, curry powder, crushed tomatoes, white sugar, and heavy cream. Why don't we start by getting our vegetables prepped over here and then we'll move over to the stovetop. Let me grab a little bowl to put our stuff in. Uh, what we really need that for is for the onion. And I thought that I forgot to buy an onion, but happily I have this guy left over 
from a previous cooking endeavor. And he's really saving my hide right now. So I've got this nice little, nice little half an onion here. And I'm gonna grab a knife. Oh boy, I'm running out of good knives. Shoot. Okay. Only guy I have left is left is this kind of kind of junky dull knife, so I apologize for um, for how bad this is about to look. Just get this off of here. There we go. And I'm just gonna try to mince this up as finely as I can with this. This knife is not that bad, it's just like it's Vussoft's um, Pro line, which is their, you know, it's, it's, it's a very in inexpensive knife, which obviously is fine, but it means that it, it's going to dull a little bit more quickly, and this has not been sharpened since I bought it, which means that it's extraordinarily dull, which means that I have a very high chance of cutting a finger off right now. So we're just going to be extra careful, and I'm just going to try to mince this up as fine as this knife, as finely as this knife will allow me. But also, you know, I don't mind a slightly chunkier uh, tikka masala. Most of us are used to it being in an extremely smooth yogurt sauce uh, or uh, cream-based tomato sauce. And th that's cool and all, but like, uh, it's not like these are going to hurt. Uh, if, if you want to really get a smooth sauce going, puree it before you serve it, before you mix the chicken in. Give it a good puree in a, in a blender, but uh, that's not what we're doing today. We're just going to make a uh, bit more of a, a rough, a rough and tumble, rough and tumble uh, tikka masala. So we have that, and we need some grated ginger and grated garlic. I have a couple of cloves here that are just jumping out of their skins, ready to assist me in my work. A little onion hair in there. Get that guy out of there. Uh, am I missing any good questions or queries? That's a no. I so, okay. Well, I just want to, I know I've said this a thousand times tonight. I just want to thank everybody who's been giving uh, Super Chats. I'm so sorry for any that I've missed. It's just impossible to catch them all, which is a, uh, a sentence that I'm very, very grateful to be able to say. It's incredible to me that there's too many super chats for me to keep up with. That's like an, an incredible ph phenomenon, and um, and uh, I, I I I I appreciate each and every one of you. I really appreciate you guys hanging out here, and uh, yeah, we're making some tikka masala. So I'm just getting the the mise en place ready for the sauce, which we're going to start on the stove top any minute now. Uh, the procedure, if I remember correctly, is to saute the um, onion and then add the garlic and the ginger and the bird's eye chili and the um, tomato paste and uh, our, our garam masala, garam masala. Jeez, really should have looked up the pronunciation of that before, because it's something we all say, but like, I don't know which one is the right one. Um, but uh, I don't even know if I need this bowl, honestly. I don't need this bowl. Uh, let's move over to the stove top. Here we go. I'm just, first, I have to just grab a saucepan. I know how much you guys love it when I say that because it doesn't really make anybody mad. Here we go. Got ourselves a saucepan. Here we go. And I'm just going to get that ready for camera one here. Make sure that's in focus. It is. And I'm just going to grab some vegetable oil, put about I don't know, tablespoon, tablespoon and a half worth of vegetable oil in there. Grab my lighter. A lot of people wonder why I, I have to light my stove like this, and it's because the pilot light for this stove is extraordinarily hot, and now that we're getting into the warmer summer months, uh, to have that pilot light on would mean um, a very, very, very warm kitchen, warmer than it already is, which is, it, it is pretty warm. Um, so. Got to avoid that at all costs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to saute the onion a little bit. Then I'm going to add all of our aromatics. I'm going to add the um, tomato paste, which I just saw a minute ago, which is right here. Here we go. And I'm going to make sure that our cans are open. What's up? V Vinny's, Vinny's paying me a visit here. OK, he's, uh, he's bothered by the focus. We're on this camera, though, right, Jake? We're on the stove? OK, just making sure. Okay, I'm going to use my fancy can opener to make sure everybody's 
wide open. I want to probably use about two tablespoons of tomato paste. Tomato paste really adds like a slow cooked kind of vibe to quickly cooked sauces like this one. This one's not going for much more than 20 minutes. Uh, if I remember correctly, let's make sure. 20, uh, uh, five minutes, five, 10 minutes. Yeah, this guy's not, uh, total, not cooking for much more than, than uh, 20, 25 minutes. So tomato paste really adds a slow cooked loving flavor to all that. That um, it's, it's a nice little cheat code, you know? I'm just gonna add some onion there. I'm sure you can hear that ASMR happening at the moment. There we go. Get all of our one half of one onion in there. It's actually, a little, I can hear that it's a little hot. So I'm gonna turn down the heat a little bit. We don't want browning on the onion. We just want to, we just want to saute and get it nice and soft. So it helps uh, break down the sauce a little bit. I don't know where all my stuff is. Here we go. There we go. And the key to that is to just not have the heat too high and just keep it moving. Like if you let onions sit too long, even over low enough heat, it's going to get brown. And if it gets brown, it's not going to break down as, as easily. It's not going to be softer. It's going to be it's going to be um, it's going to be little little chewy bites in your sauce, which you don't want. Um, else it's just just onions just onions and oil man sometimes that's all you need in life really oh i gotta get rice going don't i i need to get rice going okay i'm gonna preheat the oven for the chicken which i believe is going to be about 375 well what's that going to be like homemade curry da, da, da. where's the uh preheat oh it's because we're broiling it that's why Okay, interesting twist. I don't have a broiler in this oven, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna hit it with some pretty high heat. I'm gonna skip the rice tonight, guys. I'm very sorry. Um, I'm sorry, I hope that doesn't mess you up, but uh, I am gonna skip the rice tonight because we, we've, uh, we've, we've already been going for two hours and this is a pretty simple dish. And uh, I, I, feel, I feel like we're, 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 we're we're, st we're, we're, out, we're out staying our welcome. And um, I'm having a lot of fun here, but I don't want to go too crazy with something as simple as chicken tikka masala. And I'll just show you, how guys, uh, show you guys how to make the dish. You guys know how to make white rice, so let's just you know, assume that uh, you know what to do with that. I'm cranking this oven pretty high because really, ideally, you want to broil your chicken so you get nice you know, brown spots and caramelization on it. But um, I don't have a broiler in this oven. This is a commercial oven. And in a commercial kitchen, you'd have an oven and you'd have an iguana. Wait, no, salamander, damn it. <laughs> wow, okay. You'd have a salamander, uh, which is you know, just a commercial broiler. It's an extremely powerful broiler. And uh, so this oven does not have that function. So what I'm gonna do instead, is just blast it with pretty high heat. I'm gonna turn down the heat on this because I need to. Add, I need to come over here and I need to chop a couple of chilies. Maybe just one chili. I don't want to go crazy here. And I'm gonna throw a glove on because if you're a person, if you're a human being that's ever chopped a chili, and then you've gone to the bathroom afterwards and you didn't wear a glove at the time, even if you washed your hands, you might find yourself in a bit of an unfortunate predicament. Predicament, if you will. Sorry. Anyway, <laughs> um, anywho, what am I missing over there, Jake? Anything good? Um, I'm looking for more, uh, you know, like I always am, more Rochester, more Wegmans, uh, seeing if we should send Vinny for rice. Vinny already uh, offered that, but... No, I, I, I have rice. I have rice. I just, I, I just don't know if I want to... No, we're right fine. You, we, we don't need the carbs. Yeah, we don't need the carbs, guys, okay? Uh, for God's sake, I just constantly show my torso on the internet all day. You really want me to, to, get, to get any wider? Give me a break. Um, I'm just going to relatively finely mince this up. Doesn't have to be that fine, but, you know, we, we, we don't want huge... 
discernible chunks of, of, of chili in our sauce. We want them to be, you know, We want them to, to, to just blend in and be, be a part of the sauce, be a team player, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I do have rice. It's more a matter of, um, it's a matter of time and it's also a matter of, uh, you know, yeah, we definitely don't need the carbs, okay? I don't know if you guys have seen what we eat around here, but yesterday I made an excess of, um, probably, I think it was about 18 grilled cheese sandwiches. Uh, if you count the little ones as individual grilled cheese because they had different grilled cheeses on them because tomorrow I plan on hopefully putting out a, um, a, uh, a, a grilled cheese episode because uh, tomorrow is National Grilled Cheese Day. And it's just a, I call it a bonus with Babish because it's not, it's not binging, it's not basics, it's just kind of like just for fun. And I bought uh, 20 different cheeses and tested them out with, with, with Swear and Vinny as my as my unfortunate test subjects. Guys, what would what, what, you think of that? Jake? You guys like that smooth transition? What just happened? What's happening right now? <laughs> oh, cool. Uh, but no, I was asking, uh, what did you guys think of the grilled cheese? Jake? We loved all the grilled cheeses, but I'm pretty excited about the one we, we uh, came to a conclusion on. I was thinking about that a lot last night. <laughs> what we did. That's, that's nice to hear. Um, I, I feel like we didn't reach a real conclusion, though. I feel like the, the opinions differed on each one. Like, Jake, you, you liked uh, bread that was toasted in olive oil. Then he liked butter, and I liked, um, I liked butter, I think most of all, but like a lot of people like mayo, a lot of people like um, uh, 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 butter and uh, uh, mustard, like it's, it's a diverse world of grilled cheese out there and I really want the takeaway message of the video to be the grilled cheese, the best grilled cheese in the world is the one that you make for your family. You know what I mean? Can you dig that? So what I'm doing right now is I'm, uh, I'm grating in two cloves of garlic and a solid inch of ginger into our sauteing onion and peppers. The peppers are aerosolizing their capsaicin, which is going up into my eyes, and it is a painful uh, experience for me as a human being. And you'll find that uh, you probably want to grate this stuff off, um, off the heat and bring it over and just dump it in so you're not just constantly subjecting your eyes to a, a a, uh, an onslaught of, um, of aerosolized capsaicin and uh, you know maybe learn from my mistakes that's really the idea behind binging with Babish is that uh, you're watching a man mess up so you don't have to often sometimes it works out but you know I get lucky you know okay oh that does smell good though that was burning my eyes for a second, but that is smelling mighty fine. Next up, I'm also going to add my tomato paste. I want a, I want a smaller spoon to do that with. I really do. I really do. There we go. Down goes the temperature. I just gave it a little boost. I'm going to put about a tablespoon. Well, that's a big tablespoon. About two tablespoons of tomato paste in there. And I'm also going to add. Um, I'm also going to add about a tablespoon of our homemade garam masala. Pretty sure that's the right way to say it. I'm sure people are correcting me though, rightfully so. And we're just going to let that uh, sauté get to know each other just a little bit. And uh, you know, about 30, 45 seconds. That's generally the rule of thumb when it comes to garlic and ginger and spices and all that stuff. Really only want to let it go for 30, 45 seconds. The tomato paste is definitely giving a little extra barrier of protection. But now I've got uh, a can of crushed tomatoes here that I'm going to 
dump in there. Once I made sure that I'm not missing anything, make sure that these guys are good and toasty. Oh, the smell. The smell is bananas. I'm gonna add a little bit more spice, actually. I really want this to be well seasoned. Zoop. And now I guarantee it will be. We got those spices almost dry toasting all over again, but they're doing it with a bunch of uh, tomato paste and some aromatics. It's really something special. Now I'm gonna add a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. And I'm also gonna add maybe a quarter can of water. That, uh, I'm not gonna do that actually, because remember the water in my apartment tastes like pencils. Uh, so we're just gonna mix this all in here. Get everybody nice and acquainted. And we're gonna bring it to a simmer. Um, I do wish I had some water. You know, I have, a, I have a water filter over here. And I'm just gonna, it's gonna take a second, but I'm just gonna, I, I really just want a quarter a can of water because I want this to cook for 20 minutes or so, 15, 20 minutes, and it's gonna dry it out a little bit too much. And I'd like to, for it to stay a little loose while I'm doing that. So, not even a quarter can, like an eighth of a can of water. There we go, just a little bit, just to compensate for what's gonna happen over the next, uh, over the next uh, uh, 15, 20 minutes or so. There we go. So we wanna, we wanna cook out some of that raw tomato flavor. Obviously it's gonna get rounded out a lot when we add heavy cream, which uh, Vinny, I forgot to get heavy cream too. I think we're gonna need you to get that. I'm just kidding, don't, don't, you're good. I have heavy cream, I checked, and I'm just kidding, sorry. Just thought I'd throw you guys for a loop. Just thought I'd mess with you. Jake, what am I missing over there? Any good questions? Uh, we got a request from uh, White Bark uh, for what your favorite garbage plate is. What is my favorite garbage plate? I mean, I was raised on P-Hots, but I'm learning that that wasn't the best one out there. That like Dogtown or, I, I, I did go to Nick Tahoe's and I don't think, I think Nick Tahoe's is a, even though they are the inventors, obviously, I think that it's an inferior plate to uh, Piat's, but that's just, you know, it's just me. That's fighting words too. I apologize to any uh, Rochesterians watching me that might be upset by that. Um, yeah, I agree. I was raised on Piat's, Piat's. My, I mean, my man over here, Sawyer, he came from Penfield. He came from Piat's. He is a product of I'm Piat's. From, I'm from Piat's, so. <laughs> Sawyer was born and raised in Piat's, so. I'm gonna add a little splash of olive oil too, maybe like a tablespoon worth. Because that's gonna, emol once we add, I mean, oil plays really nice with tomato-based sauces. It's, it's gonna incorporate right in there. It's not gonna be like a greasy layer on top of the sauce. But especially once we add, um, once we add heavy cream, it's gonna emulsify right in there. But it's also, look, it's already gone. There's no, there's no greasy layer. It's, it's, uh, it's already part of the sauce. And I'm just gonna bring this up to a simmer and I just, I just want it to cook down just a little bit. I'm just gonna check my recipe real quick, folks. All right, it's about time we get this chicken in the oven. So I'm going to clear this off, and I just touched that pepper with my hand, which means that I'm in for a good surprise next time I go for a whiz. And what I'm gonna do, ah, sorry, but the person that I'm, oh. The per the, hang on, let's <laughs> get this out of here. Here we go. Uh, the person that I'm uh, dating right now uh, broke that uh, <laughs> broke that cabinet. <laughs> and uh, in case they're watching, I just wanted to call them out. Um, so here we go. I'm getting the chicken out of the fridge, out of the marinade. Let me know if what I just said is uh, upsetting anybody. <laughs> I knew that it was going to be a strange thing to say, but uh, here we are. So, I'm just throwing a glove on so I can handle this chicken. And we obviously want to shake off as much excess marinade as possible, but yogurt really helps the browning process in the oven. It really does, so it's not that big of a deal. Also, I'm wasting a glove, but sorry. But uh, I did forget to uh, wipe this grate down with olive oil or uh, uh, vegetable oil because um, it will stick pretty pretty heartily if you don't give her a good uh, give her a good rub down first. So I'm just gonna hit this guy with this 
some olive oil there, or jeez, uh, I'm all over the place. Some vegetable oil, and this isn't gonna like help prevent the pan from getting dirty or anything. But oh jeez, all right. Well, okay. I was going to put down a layer of parchment paper, but somebody covered that up. So instead, put down a layer of tin foil because this isn't going to like prevent the pan from getting dirty, but it's going to prevent from things from sticking to and burning on the pan, which is uh, it's just going to help clean up later on. So anyway, here we go. Glove out. I'm going to be doing this for the next minute, Jake, so let me know if I'm missing any uh, important or big questions. I've got my oven preheated to about 400 degrees right now. Ideally, you want to broil these guys. And I'm just going to spread these out across my my rack set in a rimmed baking sheet lined with aluminum foil, which is going to help assist in the cleanup a little bit. And we want to get these pieces nice and brown, not necessarily cooked all the way through. We want some good browning on them. So they uh, have some nice color. And then we're just going to finish cooking them in the sauce and then they can pick up some of the flavor of the sauce, but they can still be their own, they can still be their own person, you know what I mean? They can still stand on their own because they've been marinating in a blend of spices and yogurt right now that is uh, profound, to say the least. And uh, I would love to broil these, but I do not have a salamander. And my oven is a commercial one, so it does not have a built-in broiler. It is just a heating element on the bottom. But I would never blame it for that, and I would never hold it against it. I accept my oven for who it is. Anybody who disagrees can go straight to hell. So I'm just spreading these out. And we're only going to let these go for like, you know, 15-ish minutes. Got a really nice hot oven here because I just want to put browning on the outside. It's not about cooking them through, especially because we're dealing with chicken breast. You try to cook these through in the oven just as is, you're going to have some dry chicken breast. But you get some good browning on the outside very, very quickly, and then finish cooking it in the sauce. You're gonna, it's gonna stay juicier. It's gonna, it's, it's not gonna lose moisture as quickly. It's gonna be less stringy. And it's gonna be juicier. So here we go. We're going back over here, and we're gonna throw these. Here we go. We're gonna put these in the oven. There we go. All right, those are in the oven. It's a nice hot oven. Where are we at? Yeah, 450. Oh, good. I can crank it up a little higher. I don't care. And this guy's just starting to boil. Everything is coming together. Just, just like we planned, fellas. Just like we planned. I'm gonna give this a little taste because I love seeing how sauces develop over time. One of my favorite things to do when I'm making a red sauce of any kind or you know, a tomato sauce or stew is to taste it initially and be like, where's this at? Mm. And it's very flavorful, a lot, of, a lot of spice, a lot of warmth, but it is also very fresh. The, the tomatoes have barely been touched by heat, and uh, they, they, they definitely need time to stew here and get to know each other a little bit. And then we're going to add some cream, and that's going to make that, you know, orangey, creamy kind of glow that we're all so familiar with when it comes to tikka masala. Okay, chicken's in the oven. That is heating up. Perfect time to answer some more questions. What have we got over here? What's going on, folks? I'm just gonna close that out and refresh it so I can see your latest. Hey, here we go. We have a $20 super chat from Chris O. Hey, Babish, you're the fucking man. Hey, thanks, Chris. I appreciate it. You're the fucking man. We've, we've lost some viewers, I understand, because we've, <laughs> we've been off the rails a little bit tonight, and that's cool. It's our first time back in a little while, and that is okay, man. I, I, I enjoy doing this. Anybody who wants to come here and hang out, I have a good time with you guys, and uh, I hope you have a good time as well. Uh, Sawyer and Vinny, how you guys doing on drinks? 
I could use a refresher. How about you, Vin? You need a drink? Yeah, yeah we're, we're coming. All right, boys are coming in for a refresher. Make sure we have enough ice. We have three cubes left. How fortuitous is that? Three cubes left and there's three of us. That can only mean one thing. Somebody mathematically determined. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> sure. Um, we had a little bit of chair trouble earlier, folks, and uh, we're just trying to navigate that personally and emotionally. All right, so over here, fellas, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have Sawyer Jacobs, partner in crime. Over here we have the newest addition to the team, Vincent Cross. You might know him from It's Alive. He is also now the new director and editor of Being With Babish, our new show. Go check it out. I'm going to start with you guys because I don't know if there's enough of this left. What do you think, folks? Can we do it? Oh, that just worked out, didn't it? There we go. What do you think? Even pours? I should have been a bartender. <laughs> Cheers, fellas. It's, Cheers. Not too late. <laughs> it's never too late. Never Cheers. Too late. Thank you, guys. All right. So, to recap, for anybody who is just joining us, our chicken is in the oven. Our sauce is slowly coming to a simmer, kind of. I don't know why it's taking so darn long. But uh, here, I'll, I'll wait until Jake's back at his, at his post until I um, switch over to a different camera. Uh, this, is, this is a little operation, folks. I don't know how many of you know this, but you know we operate out of my apartment. Uh, they're in my living room slash our offices right now in the other room. And uh, Jake just hung up on me. And uh, we have... <laughs> Nicholas, you're, you're, you're crazy. Nicholas, so got to go to bed now, but wait. I, I also love what you just said. Nicholas just gave a 50 euro super chat. Thank you so much. And he said, so got to go to bed now, but got to go to bed now. <laughs> Thanks, man. Appreciate it. I appreciate you. I appreciate everybody here, but I uh, really appreciate your generosity. You've given me an incredible amount of money tonight. <laughs> and uh, I don't know how to say thank you. There, Sawyer's calling me back. We, ha we, ha we have a system here where we, uh, he and I talk on a secret phone call so he can whisper in my ear, whisper sweet nothings when I need to do something or when, uh, when uh, you know, there's been a problem or somebody has a question or, you know, whatever. It's really a brilliant system. So I'm just bringing the sauce to a simmer here. Ah, man, this oven is getting so hot. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know how I did this in the summer this past year, but like, wow. Oven's hot. It's hot in here. I'm hot. Not like in that sense. I'm just warm. Oh, so, Nicholas, thank you very much for the incredibly generous typo. I really appreciate it. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for supporting me in, in an incredible way tonight. But thank you all. Uh, Ravi, you're back. I remember you from before. Five Canadian, Canadian dollars. I'm staying for the whole thing. What is your favorite healthy breakfast? My favorite healthy breakfast has got to be avocado toast. I'm sorry if that's very basic of me, but um, I love it. I mean, there's protein, there's carbs. It's a, it's a great way to start the day. And uh, I, uh, I, I, I make that myself. I have a few avocados in the fridge specifically for that purpose. These fellas right here, these are my breakfast, breakfast avocados, you know? So that's my favorite healthy breakfast. Thank you for sticking around with me. Appreciate it. Simon Madison gave 10 pounds sterling and said, Maker's Marker Monkey Shoulder, what should I drink? Monkey shoulder, probably. Um, well, eh, that's tricky, man. You're talking like, you know, uh, sort of like middle bourbon to middle blended scotch. It really depends on what you're in the mood for. A lot of people think, you know, and I'm sure you don't think this. I'm just saying to people who, who aren't informed that a lot of people think whiskey all tastes like or that it's all harsh or whatever. And um, I'm heading over to camera B here, sorry. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's really a matter of your taste and what you're into. Are you into the, you know, the, 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 the more sort of aged, funky kind of characteristics of a scotch? Or are you into the more oaky, uh, uh, unpeated, uns smokeless kind of things like a, like a maker's mark? Um, I don't know, man. If I, I, I'm doing bourbon tonight. We're all doing bourbon. We've been drinking Angel's Avenue. We just killed off the bottle. Um, 
if I were you, I would go bourbon, so I would go Maker's Mark. Get into it. You're probably just asking me as a tiebreaker. I didn't mean to get all philosophical with you, so I apologize. But uh, uh, yeah, get, go Maker's Mark. Why not? Go nuts. Ow, that's hot. That's one of, the, one of the problems with this very powerful industrial stove is that it gets so crazy hot. And you can see how wide. Th this, this flame is about as low as it goes. And you can see it e even then how wide it gets and how it's, it's traveling up the sides of the pan and it's heating these handles to an untenable heat. So I'm going to grab this. Give this a little stir. We're just going to keep this going. I just want these flavors to get to know each other a little bit. You know, we got garlic, we got uh, ginger in here, we got um, our, our spice mix, we have crushed tomatoes, we have tomato paste, we have onion, and uh, everybody's just getting to know each other. We don't want separate flavors. We, we want layers of flavors, but we want, we want everybody playing nice. That means at least, you know, 15, 20 minutes on the stovetop uh, simmering gently. Another reason that I added water is that this is barely simmering as it is. And I added, you know, probably a half a cup of water to it. Uh, a thinner liquid is going to simmer more reliably. And this is like, it's so thick, it's barely letting any bubbles come up. And the result is going to be an explosion or it's going to be scorched sauce at the bottom. Because uh, it's, it, it's, it's easy, much easier to burn your sauce uh, if, it's, if it's very thick like this because it's not, it's not going to get moving on its own. All right, uh, let's see. Heading back over to the Super Chats because we got a second here. We have $10 from John Venturini. Uh, what's your bourbon of choice with Indian dishes, with Chinese dishes? Neat, of course. Keep killing it, Andrew. You're amazing. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, sorry, heading back over to camera B. And um, uh, uh, I, I honestly do not know which one would go better with which cuisine, especially because like, you know, saying which bourbon would go best with American cuisine, with American what? You know, like the, 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 there's a million different dishes and we're talking about Chinese and, and Indian cuisine, there's a billion, there's so many different dishes and uh, uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't possibly pick one to go with the entire plethora of either of those cuisines. Uh, I guess, you know, Indian definitely has a lot of tomato-based sauces. Um, so to round out that acidity, I might go with something a little bit softer, uh, not too combative. Um, I, I think, I think this, this works just fine. I, I really like uh, Angel's Envy, honestly. And again, I'm not sponsored by Angel's Envy. I'm just a fan. I'm just a dedicated fan. So I'm just going to take a peek at my chicken, see what's going down. Nothing yet. Got a little bit of browning right on the tips, right on the edges of, those, of that chicken, but uh, nothing crazy or profound yet. I'm actually going to crank up the heat a little bit. I just want to get browning on there and then we're going to finish uh, cooking it in the sauce. So also I'm just going to peek at my recipe real quick, make sure that I'm doing things correctly because I don't have this stuff memorized. This is the first time I ever made tikka masala was on this show. The second time I ever made tikka masala, what, did I already say that? I'm sorry. The first time I ever made tikka masala was on this show. The second time I ever made it is right now. So da 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 da. Let's see, five to ten minutes. Yep. Okay, cook five minutes. Okay, so it's pretty much heavy cream time, probably. Um, I do wish that we had rice. Uh, I do own rice to to quell some of your concerns, and I appreciate it. Um, I do own long grain uh, basmati rice, but um, I don't feel like making it right now. And we've been streaming for two hours and 15 minutes on a very simple dish. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty astounded that, we're, that we've been able to go this long. And uh, I'm going to add the heavy cream. And then we're really good. You know, I might actually cover this up. I'm going to grab the cover for this, uh, for this pot, if you'll excuse me for just, just a moment. There we go. I'm just going to cover that guy up and really lower the heat. Because I, I, wa I want these flavors to d develop. I don't want the sauce to necessarily get any thicker. That's something that, you know, it takes a little bit of figuring out if you're just getting into cooking. How do I keep cooking something without it getting any thinner? 
cover it up. There's no evaporation now. This sauce is going to stay the same consistency. Uh, but the trade-off is that it's going to boil more quickly and more aggressively. So you need to really crank down the heat when you cover something up if it's already at a boil. Like in five minutes, that's going to be sputtering because uh, 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 it's, it's just one of those many things that you, you figure out as you experiment in the kitchen, as you try new things. Uh, head back over here. All right, folks, what am I missing? What's going on? What's happening in the comments with the Super Chats? Just because this is a very odd Super Chat amount. $13.15 from uh, Freddy735. When are you going to get around to making a Hassan Pfeffer from Bugs Bunny? I got a couple of roadkill rabbits sa saved up and Old Blues scratching the hell out of the freezer. Regards from 315 what does any of that mean? Thank you very much for your super chat, but I honestly don't know what any any of that means. We'll look into that. We'll look into the hop and pepper from Bugs Bunny, and uh, we'll get back to you. Raymond Rogers, uh, thanks for the great videos. You got me into cooking, and I love it. That's what I like to hear, man. Thank you so much for for sharing that, and I'm very happy to have played any role in uh, getting you closer to cooking. It's 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 a uh, it's an important hobby it's it's one of our universal languages it's something that's um it's something i've only ever found joy and positivity in uh obviously i've had my fair share of low moments uh, spending lots of time or money trying to make something and having it fail on me that's a very it's a very uh discouraging thing to have happen but uh you know it's it's a, it's always a learning experience and just like any difficult part of life if you can if you can learn how to uh, take away lessons from it, then you're all the stronger for it and you're going to go back and make things better the next time. We have $10 from Janae Lane. I uh, just want to say I love your videos and you're without a doubt my favorite cooking channel. You've inspired me to continue on with my passion and maybe start a business. Keep up the good look, keep up the good work. Uh, Janae, thank you so much for the kind words. Thank you for sharing that story with me. I really appreciate it. And maybe start a business. Good luck. Uh, I, I wish you all the best with your business and uh, please reach out next time uh, once, once you've got it going and maybe we can, um, we can take a look at it and we can share it here. Uh, thank you so much and uh, thanks for the very generous super chat. And say, I appreciate it, but save the money for, for, your, for your business because uh, opening a new business is, is tough and, um, and I want you to, 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 to save it for that, but thank you very much. Uh, G Sauce gave ten dollars and said, "Dude, you pitched a Vostov knife hard, hard in basics. What made made you switch to a shun, which a lot of people probably didn't notice." By the way, huge fan. I actually have both. Um, they're dirty right now, but I very commonly use both my shun and my Vostov. Uh, I have no bias towards either. I wanted different styles of cooking knives. I wanted to see what the shun was all about, and you can try out a knife. A little bit in like Bed Bath and Beyond, you can just sort of go like this and whatever. But you don't really know what a knife is like until you own it. And I actually bought the shun. I actually bought the shun when I went to Will Smith's house. I was supposed to be on Will Smith's um, YouTube show, and uh, that fell through. But I got to meet him, and I got to uh, uh, to film some things with him. And um, I needed a chef's knife. They were like, "Can you bring a knife?" And I was like, oh, "Yeah, totally." And I went to Bed Bath & Beyond, I was like, oh, they have a shun. Or I went to William Sonoma, and I was like, oh my god, they have a shun. I've always wanted a shun. So I bought it, and I like it. It's great. It's a great knife. Um, but I also love my Vostov. Uh, I, was, I was shitting on, on this Vostov, which is the Vostov Pro, which is a great entry-level knife, but it is stamped, uh, stamped steel, which means that it's going to dull a lot more quickly than forged steel. And I haven't sharpened this since I got it, which must have been six, nine months ago. So it's pretty dull. That's all I'm shitting on is, 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 is its dullness, not, not its... Uh, for, for 20 bucks, you can't get much of a... You can't, I can't even imagine a better knife for a, a, somebody starting out in the kitchen, especially because it has this shaped grip. See that? Where you can, it's showing you exactly where your hand positioning should be when you're learning how to chop. It's showing you that your, your finger should wrap around the, 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 the heel of the blade, thumb gripping on the other side, and then chopping like that. 
So it's a great learner's knife. It's a great way to start off. Also, it's a great gift because then you get to get, say, you know, I gave you a Vustoff knife, dude, for Christmas. You remember? And, you know, really it was 20 bucks. So it's, uh, it, it really works. I'm going to give this sauce a little stir because I'm sure it's getting a little angry by now. There we go. Beautiful. Smelling good. Certainly smelling good. It's not as smooth as I would like it. You could put this in a blender and, and puree it, but I, I just really don't feel like doing that right now. Um, I'm going to check on the chicken. Chicken's making moves. It probably needs about, I don't know, 10 more minutes. It, need, it needs more color. It's cooking, but it needs more color. This oven is uh, extraordinarily hot. Um, I think at this point we could probably add the heavy cream to the sauce, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to add about three quarters of a cup of heavy cream to our sauce. Because one cool thing about heavy cream is that despite all the acidity in this tomato sauce, all the fat is going to prevent it from curdling. So even though we're adding it to it, and even though we're cooking it and applying heat and doing all these things that should, in theory, make uh, dairy curdle, it won't do it because of all the fat. And look at that. It turns into that beautiful orange color that we're all, we all know and love in our tikka masala. Look at that. Oh, yeah, dude. All right, I'm going to try, try a little sample of this. Look at that. It's, see, it, because of the onion and because of the, the um, pepper and the tomatoes, and it's chunkier than a normal tikka masala sauce that you might get from uh, uh, your local Indian restaurant. But it's so flavorful. Oh. Oh, God, it's so good. It's almost making me want to make rice, but not quite. Mm. Are people mad that I'm not making rice? Is that a thing? Uh, yeah, people are enraged. What, seriously? No. Oh, well, fucking... <laughs> we got a prankster over here. I never know because we had that one incident with the uh, barbecue sauce. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, people were making a couple of jokes about how they really wanted rice or how they had rice or they had some rice for us that we could eat. But uh, no, it wasn't anything like the sauce incident. Yeah, no, people were very sweet, except for with the sauce incident. I think it's because we were on Twitch. But um, uh, I, I, I totally erroneously uh, uh, cross-sauced my pork chops. Um, it was my fault. And uh, I have an upcoming... Um, grilled cheese test that's coming out tomorrow, hopefully, uh, where I test, you know, d two dozen different kinds of, different, different kinds of, yes, two, two dozen different kinds of cheese and bread toasting uh, um, methods and, and um, all different kinds of stuff. And um, I specifically cut my bread in a very special way where, you know, it gets narrower, wider, widest. And uh, from, from like a, a square piece of bread to a sort of rectangular piece of bread to a very rectangular piece of bread so I could keep track of what cheese was on what bread. Uh, so I would have a system so I wouldn't mess that up. So you can rest assured that the, cheese, the grilled cheeses uh, in hopefully tomorrow's video are, uh, are, are, are thoroughly vetted. Um, I'm going to check on the chicken real quick and see how we're doing here. Okay, we're starting to get a little browning on the corners there. I'm gonna give the, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna turn it around. I'm gonna give it a little flip, not a flip, you know, literally with tongs. I'm just going to turn it around so some of these pieces are facing the hotter side of the oven. There we go. And I'm gonna really crank the heat now. I got this oven up to 800 degrees once because it is an industrial oven, and it is very easy to adjust. <laughs> Um, you just have to take the knob off and turn the screw, and it will raise or lower the heat relative to the um, relative to the to the temperature setting as desired. And um, this oven was running very cold for a long time, so I had a, a technician come over here, and uh, I asked them to fix it, and they just showed me here. All you gotta do is turn the screw, and I did, and I realized okay, I can get this oven super hot, which is perfect for making pizza and for you know, it, it, 
it's very handy to have an extremely hot oven. And I got it up to like 800 degrees once. This oven can really crank. And it's terrifying. It's very scary uh, to, to be in your home, to be in, a, in an apartment, and to open up an oven that, that is measuring 700 to 800 degrees. Um, let's take a look at how the sauce is looking here. There we go. Oh, yeah. I mean, it might be a little chunky, which I, again, I personally love. But it, that is tikka masala sauce all the way through. I'm adding a little bit more cream because I want a little bit lighter of a color. There we go. Yeah, dude. I'm also going to apply more heat, honestly, because it's not simmering the way I would like. And I want this to cook, you know? We have tomatoes fresh out the can. I want them cooked. Here we go. Mm. Oh, that's good. Wow. Oh, that's good. That's so good. Um, so, I'm, yeah, I'm just going to let that simmer and just let, that, let that keep getting to know itself. Because <laughs> uh, those flavors were getting to know each other, but now that they've gotten to know each other so well, this is just one person. And it just has to get to know itself, you know? It has to get back to its roots. And um, head back over here. So we're just waiting on the chicken pretty much at this point. And then um, once the chicken has some nice color on it, we're going to take it out, put it in the, in the sauce, and let it finish cooking in the sauce. That way uh, its flavors get imbued into the chicken, and, um, and uh, the chicken doesn't dry out because it's not cooking uh, in dry heat to completion at very high temperatures because that would, that would dry it out very, very quickly. So what do we have as f by way of super chats? What do we got going on here? Uh, Nicholas, you're nuts. Um, Sam Jarrett gave $20 and said, thank you so much for this show. Ever since I moved out to Pittsburgh with my girlfriend a year ago, I've watched, I've watched every episode of your show. My confidence has skyrocketed as a result and has brought me much joy. So much joy. Uh, Sam, that's lovely to hear. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you very much for your generous super chat. I'm only switching because I see another, one, another person is about to run out. John Brown gave $20 and said, love you, Babs. Keep being cool, bud. Thank you, John. Thank you for thinking that I'm cool. Because I'm 31 and I'm officially too old to be cool. So thank you. Unless you're like Johnny Depp or something. Here we go. We got... We have $5 from John S. Make rice or just end the live stream. <laughs> uh, sorry, John. I guess we'll just end the live stream because I'm not making rice. I apologize. Shoot. Um... We have $10 from Zoe Sullivan. Hi from Texas. Love your vids. Keep it up. Thank you so much, Zoe. Thank you for the generous super chat. And uh, I will absolutely keep it up if you will. Uh, John S. again. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. We have a, a real prankster on our hands with John S. <laughs> John S. just gave another four ninety nine and said, Andrew, this is your father here. Make the rice, son, or don't come home visit your mother and I this Christmas. <laughs> this guy really wants me to make the rice. John S., I know the difference between you and my father. My father's name is Douglas, I promise. Uh, Onyx34A gave five, dollar, five pounds sterling and said, hey man, how are you today? Just tuned, tuned in from the SpaceX live stream and I'm already hungry from watching Love Curry. What is the SpaceX stream? Is there a SpaceX stream that we're not aware of? That we should, that we're that we're interrupting? <laughs> I apologize yeah, if that's the case. Is that our competition? Space? That, that's our competition, yeah. Uh, as usual, space. Uh, thank you very much for your for your super chat and uh, thank you for stepping away from the SpaceX stream. I'm going to go check that out. After we're done here, I'm gonna take a look. Um, WXX Hot Rod XXW gave $5 and said, Bab, I love you and your cooking. Please be my dad. Uh, okay. All right. Well, I've adopted you officially. Thank you very much for your super chat. X Seraph gave $5 and said, Found you through that one Reddit post about Szechuan sauce way back when. Thanks for the countless hours of free content over these years, man. You're welcome. Thank you for watching. Thank you for the super chat. Thank you, everybody, for all of your super chats. We have $10 again from Nathaniel Fry. What's up, dude? Whoops again. <laughs> 
Where do you get your aprons from? Any recommendations on buying a nice apron? I get these aprons. These are made by Sintus, S-Y-N-T-U-S. They are on Amazon for $10 for a, uh, for a two-pack. If you go to bingingwithbabish.com, you can go to my, my official list of gear, and you can find them there. Uh, they're 10 bucks for two. And uh, I like them because they're, they're a little bit shiny. They're a little, tiny bit of a sheen to them. They're, they're stiff and rigid. Go for the, uh, the thicker version. There's the regular version and the thicker version. Go for the thicker version. And um, hang on. I can smell this sauce getting hot over here. There we go. None of that now. No scorching. It's a very thick sauce, so it wants to scorch. It wants to stick to the bottom and burn because it's so thick. It won't bubble like uh, thinner sauces or like water. So I'm going to take that off. I think our chicken's probably ready to go in there, so I'm going to grab that. I just need tongs. Here we go. Grab some tongs. Yep, no, chicken's ready. There we go. All right. There we go. We got some nice color on the chicken. I'm going to kill that oven because it's crazy hot. And because we properly greased our, um, our uh, 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 the rack set in our, in our um, rimmed baking sheet, nothing's sticking. Everybody, everybody's going in without complaint or protest. And we're just tossing these guys in here. They have some nice browning, some nice Maillard on them. They're probably not fully cooked. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the thickest one. Where's my temperature probe? Here we go. There you are. Grab a thermometer. Take the thickest piece. I'd say probably this guy. He's short, but he's stout. And I'm, I'm reading 150. That's perfect, actually. I'm reading 150 in that piece right there. That's perfect. So if we take uh, these 150 pieces in here, we throw them into the sauce and let, them, let everybody cook and get to know each other for about five minutes, 10 minutes. It's going to be perfect. Hell yeah is right, Sawyer. That's what we get for doing things correctly and sending Vinny out to get yogurt. Thank you, Vinny, again for that. Appreciate it. Because um, I forgot to get yogurt. Oh, almost lost that one. There we go. And now I'm just going to give this a stir. Get everybody in there. Oh man, that is some chicken tikka masala right there. Okay. Cover that. I'm gonna let these guys finish cooking for like five minutes, five, 10 minutes. And uh, we're gonna have ourselves some good homemade Indian slash British, British uh, cuisine here in just a moment. We have super chats from. We have super chats from Robin Pace, five dollars. Been watching since the beginning. Yay and four million. Why no rice? Because should I just make rice? No, it's too late now. I don't feel like it. <laughs> I'm tired. We have so much to do. Uh, we have a very, very, very long day tomorrow, guys. We have to. I won't say what, but we're shooting episode three of Being with Babish, and it's a big undertaking and. It's going to take a lot of effort from all of us, and uh, I want us to be able to focus on that. I know that it's early, but I have editing to do tonight. Sawyer has contracts to look through. Vinny has editing to do. Um, so we're, we're, we're going to um, we're going to call it an early night once, uh, once this chicken is cooked through and we get to taste it. I'm just going to move this away from the heat. That's all. I just don't want that so, so close to the heat. Man, these things die fast, dude. I just got the little noise saying, hey, this is getting low on battery. We've only been going for a couple hours now. Damn it, Apple. I'm kidding, sponsor me. You, don't, you guys don't do sponsorships, but maybe I could be the first. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, no, we, 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 have, we have to call it an early night tonight, unfortunately, uh, but you know, you guys know how to make rice, and I've shown how to make rice in multiple ways on multiple occasions. You can make it in a pressure cooker, you can make it on the stove top, you can make it in the oven. That's my personal favorite, is to um, combine, you know, look at, look at the packaging of your rice and uh, combine whatever it says, you know, rice to water ratio, and uh, put it in, um, 
boil the water, bring the water to a boil, add the rice, cover it, put it in the 350 degree oven for, t depending on the, if you know, if it's, if it's white rice or if it's uh, brown rice or if it's uh, wild rice or whatever, um, just put it in there for between 15 to 30 minutes, uh, depending on, you know, longer for, for the, the more whole grain it is, the more um, unprocessed it is, go a little bit longer. Um, and you're going to have the most perfect fluffy rice. If you make rice on the stovetop, it's, it's a, it's a crapshoot, I swear. Um, so make rice that way. It's the easy way. It's the best way. I'm going to give this a stir because I'm worried that it's sticking to the bottom and scorching. We're heading back over here. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Yes. Somebody asked, is this sauce spicy? No. I mean, it's... Uh, so, so to answer your question, whoever asked that, um, this is not very spicy. All the spices that were toasted and ground earlier, uh, except for the red pepper flake, uh, all those spices were pretty mild, if not you know, completely inert. The red pepper flake brings a little bit of heat, and then the bird's eye chili. We added one bird's eye chili, which I just dropped between the stove and my countertop, so I'll get that in about a few years. Um, we added one bird's eye chili, which is this little guy. It's got about the same heat as a jalapeno, and we took out all the seeds and, and, and um, seeds and veins, which r really just take the teeth out of, a, out of any, not any pepper, but most peppers. And um, so this is an extremely mild tikka masala. You might feel a little bit of warmth when you're eating it, just a little bit of, um, a little tiny bit of heat. That's what the red pepper flake is there for. That's what the bird's eye chili is there for. If you don't like spicy, if you don't want spicy, leave those two things out. You're not going to miss anything flavor-wise. Those things are only there for heat. Bird's eye chilies have, have about mu as much flavor as I do in them. And uh, th they're really just to bring a little bit of heat to the party. They're kind of like a little, kind of like a little jalapeno. Um, you could use jalapeno in this recipe if you wanted, but I think those are actually spicier than bird's eye chilies. Um, Let's take another look at this. That's getting warm. Yeah. That's looking pretty righteous. All right, so guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a big taste out of this. And then we're going to call it a night because... We're all tired, boys. We got big projects that we're working on. I'm gonna kill the heat here. Uh, it's gonna be hot. I'm gonna move this over here. <laughs> I'm move this over here. I'm gonna cut it in half. We can examine it on the worktop. So this is the chicken tikka masala. I'm going to, you know, chop it in half. <laughs> Chicken's cooked properly. There we go. And I'm going to grab a fork. I'm going to eat that. I don't have any forks, so I'm going to use this spoon. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, <laughs> we didn't fully prepare for tonight's live stream. But um, what we did make is a lovely chicken tikka masala. Mm. One that has juicy chicken and a very full, round, floral, inviting, warm sauce. A little bit of heat, definitely, from the um, bird's eye chili and from the uh, uh, red pepper flake. Definitely has some spice to it, definitely has some heat to it. But it's not overwhelming, it's not overpowering the, uh, the spices, it's, 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 it's um, or the flavors. It's, it's, it's enough to sort of awaken the, the taste buds and the, and the senses without numbing them or, mm. I mean, seriously guys, I've, I've had my fair share of Indian takeout from my fair share of, of, uh, of locations and um, I gotta say, this is quite unlike anything because not only are we using freshly toasted, freshly ground spices, but also we're customizing that blend. You could do whatever you wanted to this. You could add more cloves and more cumin for the slightly more familiar flavors in tikka masala. You could add um, more, ooh, you could add more nutmeg 
for a bit more florality and like, you know, the, the lightness that comes from, uh, uh, from that, more cardamom. Just try it out. See what happens. See how different spices play together and see, see, how they, see how they interact. This is kind of a nasty image to go out on, so I'm going to wipe that up. But I will say, we got a long night ahead of us, and uh, I'm pretty tired. I know my boys over there are tired. So I just want to thank you guys so much for hanging out. I want to say thank you to everybody who gave a super chat, every, all my new members. Please check out YouTube memberships. It's a way to see uh, all the episodes of my show, whether it be being basics or binging, 24 hours ahead of time. I always post those episodes the day before. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for super chats. Thank you for memberships. Thank you for being part of this community and being part of uh, the, the, the Babish culinary universe. And uh, I really can't wait to see you guys next time. Thank you, Sawyer and Vinny, for helping out in the other room. Uh, thank you, Vinny, for going and getting yogurt when we so dearly needed it. I hope you guys give this a try for yourselves because it's really, truly delicious. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much. Have a great night.